Judith, and good we'll evening. Begin this evening's program what a pleasure it is to be working with you again this evening, Natasha. And uh, I think that we are going to have a wonderful evening. Of course, the, the purity of uh, the whole question of the junior queens yes. is stage, really what we look forward to. And they are the, the clearing house, as it were, for the adults. So we see, we hope that we're going to have your company all evening to see. And here on stage, we have the first queen. And from the band whose presentation is Passage to China. 755 Brielle Mills. Jade Princess. This costume signifies the Chinese tradition and according to Chinese mythology, the Jade Princess is a daughter of the Jade Emperor who is a deity. She created nature and mankind. In the Chinese New Year festivities, it is an auspicious stone that brings people comfort and hope as they enter the new year. Brielle Mills portraying the Jade Princess. Thank you. That was Queen number one, 755 Brielle Mills, portraying Jade Princess. And now, judges, Queen 765. Queen 765, Janae Edwards, and her portrayal is Jewel of the Reef. Janae Edwards. Jewel of the Reef. Queen coming on stage, Janai Edwards. What a beautiful costume, Jewel of the Reef, as she portrays, of course, the beautiful green costume on the reef here. And uh, Natasha, what, what do we have with this costume? She's in the category Creative Tropical, and the concept is to visit the Buku or Speyside Reef. You'll encounter different species of coral, fish and animals, and creatures of the sea. Untouched and possesses and a, a mystique that leaves everyone in awe. Janae's costume is created with plastic molded fishes, fiberglass rods, and hand-painted nets. On stage, Queen 765, Janae Edwards, her portrayal, Jewel of the Reef, in the Creative Topical category. She just is epitomizing the reef, all the movement and the delicacy of that costume that just speaks of water. She's really moving in the costume beautifully. And I, th and I think it, it matches. Jewel of the Reef. Next, Queen 572. Queen 572. This 
this is Jana. It's the celebration time. This is Jana Bethel. And this category is Creative Tropical, Trinbago. We fly in high too. It's a celebration. Nice mix of colors that they have here. The purples and the golds, of course, uh, based on the traditional masters of a sailor. Let's see him enjoy that costume. On stage, Jana, Jana Bethel. Her portrayal, it's celebration time in the creative topical category. Jana Bethel, registration number 572. Well, I think it's a wonderful costume. And of course, the tradition of the sailor mask is what we have replicated here with the symbols of the pan, the sailor trousers that are once again coming to be really fashionable <laughs> again, huh? <laughs> Natasha, what a wonderful little costume. And, costume it is. and, and she's got a lot of movement in that costume with the purple and the gold that just accentuates uh, the beauty of it with the sequence and of course her hat. Our sporting heroes and last but not least, 40 years involvement in Trinidad and Tobago from the band and Bob and the friends. Trinbago, we're flying high. It's a celebration. Coming up now, we have junior queen contestant number four, Next. Natanya Phillip. This is Dance queen La Reine Rive. Also in the creative queen topical category. Two. And the presentation Natania is Phillip. Dance is a Her Trini. Definitely a Dance. Trini, Judith. And of course, you know, La Reine Rive is part of the best village uh, pantheon that we always have. And Anne Rabob, uh, where she comes from, is, is one of the famous names of queens in Trinidad and Tobago's uh, celebration of carnival in the bands. Here we go. in celebration of the finals of the Prime Minister's Best Village Trophy competition from 1963 to today. Yes, 60 years of excellence. Paying tribute to the greats, to the many creatives who have toiled and kept the culture of our beloved country alive. We salute you. We thank you. Thank you. La Reine Rive, Best Village Lives. On stage, Natania Phillip, her portrayal, Dance, La Red Reveal, from the band That Is A Trini, by Jackie Poonhau, House of Jackie. 
wonderful costume, uh, replicating the whole feel of the best village. She has the wonderful Juliet there, and uh, the headpiece, the head tie, all of it um, encompassing the spirit of La Reine Rive, uh, the Prime Minister's best village uh, trophy situation that would have arisen over 60 years. And we mark the same 60 years as Pantron Bago marks because of things that happened politically in Trinidad and Tobago to save or to uh, maintain our culture. Beautiful skirt, and she's just having a ball. She's able to move that costume, and as I say, the traditional Juliet and everything. Lovely costume. Let's hear it for Netanya Philip, her portrayal, Dance Lauren. Rivet. Coming up now, we have junior queen contestant number five, Rihanna Passard. Now, this is portrayal is the spirit of carnival, also in the category of creative topical, and the presentation is Sweet Trin Bagel. The spirit of carnival zero, shows in zero. this piece captivated by the many one colors. Zero, this costume eight, depicts zero. the splendor and this a true revelry in carnival, Rihanna the Passard. movement and enjoyable time the whilst portraying the multi colors carnival. bringing out the true spirits the of carnival category Rihanna Passard the spirit of carnival her costume in the creative topical category is depicting the many colors and splendor of carnival it shows the culture and creativity of our national festival we see happy faces and, in, and the color of carnival and colorful fabric showing movement and splendor. Junior Queen 1080, Rihanna Passard, her portrayal, The Spirit of Carnival. Let's hear it for a beautiful masquerader, Rihanna Passard, who portrayal the spirit of carnival. Again, we have the replication of the sailor, the traditional sailor that emerged in the costuming. So we have all the elements of the Trinidad carnival uh, in this costume. We have the masks, uh, which is one this of the is premier the elements the and what wonderful Carnival movement she manages to Once accomplish a large costume which Rihanna she carries Passard herself her the spirit of Carnival. And as we what a beautiful the costume there Rihanna now Passard, coming on stage in on position stage. number six is Junior Queen 789, Alyssa Serju. Now, this portrayal is of Mama Africa, first Number African six. category we've seen for the night, and the presentation is Ubuntu. Queen, seven, eight, now, the nine, mythical figure Umama queen, is considered seven, eight, the mother nine, of all people Alyssa of Africa. Serju. In Africa, to deny this connection and is similar to disowning your heritage. Mama. Umame is also known as the human spirit and the mother African of the human category. race. This comes from the belief that there is only the one true race, the Ubuntu. human race, and only one true nation, the nation of human beings. Junior Queen 789, Alyssa Sergio, Mama Africa, the portrayal, Africa, the category, from the band Ubuntu. The mythical Mama Africa is considered the mother of all peoples of Africa, regardless of nation, culture, religion, or race. To deny this connection is to disown your African heritage. Mama Africa is known as the human spirit and mother of the human race. This comes from the belief 
that there is only one true race, the human race, and only one true nation, the nation of human beings. On stage, Alyssa Sergio, Mama Africa. From the band, so we Ubuntu. have the South African feeling here, uh, Mama Africa, uh, reminiscent of uh, Miriam Makiba, and we have a lot of black and white uh, images on the pan. We have on the drums all the the elements that make up uh, the South African images. Beautiful Elizabethan skirt that allows her to move freely. And uh, again, these queens, these junior queens are carrying their costumes beautifully. Uh, you see again at the top of her costume, a floral element that also looks like an umbrella. Again, reminiscent of the African tribal um, images. On stage, the portrayal Autumnal colors of mud and water and Alyssa so on at the Sergio. bottom of her skirt in layers very beautiful costume she manages to get the movement on that costume making away uh, stage, all the elements of the of sequence that listen as she goes off as she goes off 20, stage 23. Coming on stage now, we have a junior queen, number 156 number in seventh position. Junior this queen, is Jada Ford. One, five, and her portrayal is from Jada the fantasy Ford. category called and Firebird, The, the Awakening. The, the presentation Awakening. is Dawn of a fantasy New category. Day. Now, from the band, Dawn of New Day. This is amazing. In the words of Black Stalin, Bondem, Bondem, the firebird has Judy arose Green, from the ashes five, in all her splendor to burn firebird, all sorrows and pain that plagues our Fantasy sweet TNT. And from the 2023 presentation, dawn of a new day. In the words of Black Stalin, Bondem, Bondem, the firebird has arose from the ashes in all her splendor to burn all sorrows and pain that plagues our sweet TNT. Theme from the band New Day, depiction of front flames with the firebird arising out of the ashes depiction of the back flames basic colors black red orange yellow and gold special effects special lighting special music voice year of love On stage, the portrayal of Firebird, The Awakening, portrayed by Jada Ford, Fantasy Category, and from the band, Dawn of a New Day. This is a phoenix rising, and of course, the house announcer has given Making the perspective stage, of what Jada should Ford, be happening and Firebird, the as she goes off stage. 
Junior Queen of Carnival Finals. Coming up now, we have Lavon Clark in position number eight. This is Coming Junior next, Queen in eight six six five. Now, Judith, Registered this costume is six, quite interesting. Six, five. Known as Junior Madame Fru Fru from Levon the creative. Clark category now we were able to see this yes. when we were down on the tracks Pretty definitely good. beautiful category. the costume is decorated and with frilly the ornamentation the braids the feathers and this some pleats as well designed by ruth adams mendes and was inspired by 19th century europe where a lot of sophisticated fashions were featured especially in paris a city considered by many to be the fashion capital of the world. Madame Frufru is a very showy and fancy lady who tries assiduously to get attention. Through her costume, which is elaborately decorated with frilly ornamentations, braid, feathers, and paillettes. As a result, there is a lot of movilang as she is gossiped about in a vicious and calculated way to damage her reputation and character. Meet Madame Fru Fru. Laverne Clark, Mama Fru Fru, the portrayal on stage. Madame Fru Fru, uh, this, the, the colors have the been selected to to introduce the whole question of frou-frou. When we say frou-frou in Trinidad, it means, you know, um, overdone. And uh, of course, the whole costume is in layers and we have the pinks and the blues, all the things that you would expect from a child um, to, to really enjoy the color scheme. Pink and blue, pink for girls and blue for boys. And she has uh, really put them well together in this beautifully layered skirt. Making a way off stage, Lavon of Clark, Madame Fru Fru from the band Movilang. We're getting ready for number nine. Junior Queen five four eight. Azealia Mills and her presentation, Beautiful But Deadly. Creative Topical Category and from the 2023 band, now is Azealia Mills Passage in to China. Position number nine. This is Junior Beautiful Queen, But Deadly, also in the category of Creative Topical. Beautiful coming from the presentation, Passage to China. Creative now, as category. soon as you see this costume, the first thing that comes to mind is Lionfish in her beautiful splendor. And definitely China. all fins and spikes have been detailed here. Let's take a look. Now this costume depicts the Lionfish, which is known as an endangered species, but is also very deadly to humans. This beauty, makes a top delicacy and is allowed to be spared on the reefs in TNT. As they are unassuming pests that are hazardous to our coral reef and commercial fishing, lionfish are found rich in diversity of course, a lot of people eat lion China. fishes now. They form part of the and human diet. Secret, and um, more importantly, I think this costume right has been very well made. The choice of um, the color of red is very dynamic is because that spells danger. And, admire, and as we looked at the costume close up, Natasha, you remember how beautifully made it was. The yes. scales were replicated well. And I think she has the freedom of movement 
and really enjoying herself here at the Queen's Park Savannah, the junior queens. Who will win that competition tonight? The ominous lionfish. Yeah, we got a beautiful view of her. This is Ecclesville. It's almost as though she is swimming on and off the stage. Making her way off Coming stage. up now, we do have in position number Beautiful, 10 an interesting costume. Now, this is being portrayed by Keone Oxley. We get ready now, for number 10. the presentation of this, Judith and viewers, is Dance, Junior You Know Queen, Your Icon. Seven, and it's three, called two, Dance, Sukiya Dance, Keone a tribute Oxley. to Hilton Cox. Fire. Now, this is the second time we've heard Dance, this selection Sukiya for the Dance. night. Let's see what happens stage side. Dance, Creative Sukuya Topical Dance. From the band Dance How Dance Know Your Icon. The front of this costume shows a large face of the Sukuya who transforms herself into a large pillar of fire depicted here. Burning flames in bright red and orange. And at her side, there are also two large fire wings. At the front of the Sukhya, it was painted by a young girl, Jania Omis, whose talent is a reflection of our future in mass. When we look at the back of the costume, we see a continuation of the front with a trail of fire with feathers. Dance, Sukhya, dance. We get a nice it feeling of depth in this costume by the mask in, in the front. And then you, the you see the dimension as it goes further back. Um, I think it's the dance, lighting has really accentuated all the things that the costume uh, requires. Of course, they've selected a particular piece of music and so on. Uh, the usual pattern. Uh, dance, that we go through Sukuya, the lighting, dance. I think, really works. And a, a Sukuya is supposed Kong's to be red, of fire. course. Uh, so we got the really powerful, oh, there we are, lovely. Portrait and the ominous the mask there that gives all the and dimensions the of the mask as, we, dance, as it goes backwards. Know your icon. Nice relief. Three dimension of the costume. And she manages to get good movement, which means that the costume has been well designed, taking in the human scale even at that tender age. So she can really move around well and play a mass. Uh, part of the, um, the kudos that you get is for playing the mass, dancing the mass, dancing mm -hmm. the costume. So I think that's being achieved here in this particular costume very well. Definitely, absolutely beautiful. Interesting, they say the presentation of the portrayal and now, reflects the things which come with changes in life, structures, Junior leadership, Queen and national pride. One, one, nine, Coming up now, we have Jada Charles. Now, Jada is portraying an oil spill in the Gulf of Paria. In the creative topical category, a presentation, National Treasures. You remember we saw this costume, yes. and uh, as this it was laid Queen out, Queen it was rather beautifully one, done. Nine, uh, it Jada speaks Charles. to the Her oil on water oil and the iridescence. The, the maker and the designer told us treasury. very specifically what he was trying to achieve. So when you see National the shimmer treasures. on the water, yes. you get the iridescence and the, co the gold and the black uh, just sitting there on the water levels. And uh, he explained it rather beautifully. Good balance in the costume as well. And he managed to get the height as well. Very complete costume where again the sailor idea um, based on the tradition the three the flare trousers and uh, right down to the shoes this is junior queen 1194 jada charles her portrayal oil spill in the gulf of paria 
And of course, the netting that they have used allows the costume to look as if it's floating on, on the net. You just see the spiral with all the water and everything just floating And there. we move to queen number 13, reference number 554. Five, Moving queen on to five, our five, next four. queen. This Michaela is Michaela Questel Frederick. And this portrayal, portrayal is Moonlit, Moonlit Matura, Matura in the, in the category, category of Creative Topical. And this comes from the presentation, Let, Let There Hair Be Light. Lights. Of course, they're setting the scene for this costume to come across the stage. Music and lighting and everything. Mm. Definitely setting the scene. As we know, Isis was a major go goddess of the Egyptian world, and she was believed to help the dead enter the afterlife and protect the kingdom Reference from its enemies. number 554. Five, Michaela Questel Frederick, the portrayal Moonlit Matura. This is in the creative topical category from the presentation, Lead Hair Be Light. And of course, anybody who's it's been to Matura in Trinidad will know that the, the water there and, and the, the horizon is beautiful. Replicated here and you can hear Ms. the crescent Matura moon on her costume. To lay their yes. eggs. Watch as the female leatherback turtles come along to nest in the protection of her care. The center of Michaela's back panel displays the radiance of the moon that rests on a beautifully decorated blue fabric finished with silver braids. Her skirt spans 10 feet wide and is draped with sequins blue, black and silver frills, giving her that extra flair. The black and silver leatherback turtles are nestled around her, depicting their sanctuary, moonlit matura. The crescent moon and all the elements of uh, the leatherback turtles that come up to nest in matura. Uh, they have beautiful shells on the costume, and they've really used uh, the silver and gold and just very little gold that just highlights uh, the turtles. It's, it's very interesting how they've replicated these turtles on the water. So you see the blue and the iridescence yeah. coming up with the shells and everything. And the, those movements were wonderful that she allowed us with her bow Queen to five, see. Five, four. Michaela Questel Frederick. Even the form on Moonlit the water Matura. has been replicated. Creative topical category. A presentation. Let Floating off the stage. Be Absolutely beautiful. And now we bring to you Queen 382. 382. This is Sierra Selman. A portrayal. Nandi, a tribute to Helen Humphrey. In the historical category, the presentation, Out of the Artist Attic. Three, um, one of the interesting two. things about this costume is uh, she designed this before she died. Nandi, Helen Humphrey. Helen Humphrey. Yes. Helen Humphrey. And uh, wasn't that an amazing situation category, because we were told by uh, Ms. Samuel, this is a school um, masquerader and uh, Helen designed the costume and the day afterwards she had passed so this is a tribute to Helen Humphrey Nandi, Nandi. mother of Shaka king of the Zulus and for those of you internationally who don't know Helen Humphrey Helen Humphrey was one of our premier uh, masqueraders and supporters of uh, Julia Edwards and dance and so on, designed costumes herself and also played masks for Peter Minshall, many characters. She played a La Diablesse once and uh, of course she broke her leg at the same time. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> they, of course they attributed that to the fact Judy that uh, the folklore character Three, was speaking eight, to her. 
Ciara Salmon, Nandi, a tribute to Helen Humphrey in the historical category from the presentation out of the artist attic. And of course, the feathers come into the costume, really well made. Uh, Shaka Zulu, we, we, we know all of these kind of elements that we would have remembered from Saldina's uh, portrayals. Queen Nandi was, of course, exceptional mm -hmm. for her time, and she broke cultural norms of the 18th century and was held in high esteem because of the overcoming of many of all these difficulties. The name Nandi means the sweet one. However, when necessary, Queen Nandi would use her fierce temper to eradicate enemies as she protected her sons throughout their lifetime. And it's also recorded that she influenced political policies by her counsel. Beautiful. And how fitting it would be for Helen to do this because, of course, her husband was in, in very much involved with politics. John Humphrey, one of our ministers at one time in Trinidad and Tobago. Do enjoy this beautiful costume that is a tribute to and Helen Humphrey. And making way off stage is a queen, a junior queen, 382, Ciara Salmon, Nandi, a tribute to Helen Humphrey in the historical category from the presentation, Outer the Artist Attic. And so we welcome Junior Queen 180. Junior Queen 180, Soraya Carrington. Coming onto the stage now, this is mutation. Junior Queen Soraya the Carrington. Her portrayal is the Mutation in the Creative Topical Category. In the presentation, Dawn of a New Day. And clearly Soraya we can see Carrington. the music has been specifically selected for this, Judith. A people frozen in progress due to a worldwide pandemic now sheds their dismay to bring forth fruits of joy to the land once more. Mutation, the evolution of a people rising out of COVID. The costume represents the vibrancy of our people as we celebrate life after the lockdown. 180. Soraya Carrington. This, 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 the portrayal mutation in the creative topical category from the presentation Dawn of a New Day. One eight zero, Soraya Carrington, mutation. Out of the presentation, dawn of a new day in the creative topical category. This is a really very interesting costume, uh, mutation. And the concept of something mutating means changing into something else. And I think that we have seen here um, exactly that, a people frozen uh, into a worldwide pandemic. Way this um, is she now sheds her. Uh -huh. Soraya Carrington, a portrayal mutation in the creative topical category. I think it's a cross between the peacock turning into something else. And that's what she is doing. A good choice and of uh, colors. And this uh, brings you us to the end of the Junior Queen of Carnival competition. You will notice that just one queen. Beautiful didn't depiction turn up. there. 
So we had four beautiful pictures there of the queens, the junior queens queen of, of carnival. carnival. These are the finals, and we're going to take a short break, and we will be right back. Of course, thank you so much to our sponsors, Creamery Novelties, Nescafe, B Mobile, and many more. We'll be back. Stay tuned. And the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by B Mobile back to Bacchanal. Oh, I've got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain, and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way to flavor my day with something new, and I've got room for you. Let loose and live. And share a little Give in and taste a little You'll fall in love with creamery Novelties love life and live a little I get close and share a little Give in and taste a little You'll fall in love with creamery Novelties Enjoy new creamery novelties Live a little Lady Wabin How are you so hurry? Sorry brethren, on a mission well, look at thing in here. I don't get thing for my baby doll costume already. Samaru's really have everything for carnival. Excuse me, madam, does you have any of these in Dam Lorraine side? No, madam, I does not work here, but Samaru's has his everything for children. Mars, look, eh. Samaru's is really the carnival store. Wait now, I switch off my car? Look, hello. Finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Creamery Novelties. Live a little. And we see our first Junior King of the evening in position number one, Merrick Barnes, and his portrayal is Illumination. In the category created Tropical, the world continues to shine brightly in spite of the negatives we may face. Hello. And of course, I am here with another analyst extraordinaire as we continue our evening together. How are you? I'm pretty good. Hi, Natasha. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter Shepard, and I've been following the Children's Carnival, and so this is a particularly interesting yeah, one to commenting on. Uh, this one was one of our uh, favorites throughout the season so far with Children's Carnival, uh, now exiting the stage. Okay, and coming up in position number two, we have Antonio Rampersad. Now, this portrayal, Peter, is Pan Explosion. Is and quite interesting, we see here, this is from the presentation, that is a trini, or a trini, I should say, not a trini. That is a trini, and this comes from House of Jackie. What do you think about this? Well, Antonio is an incredible mask player, mm -hmm. and uh, he has many years of, of uh, presentations ahead of him. Just look at how he presents his costume. I'm gonna stay quiet for a little bit. I want you to see how he enjoys, how he understands the stage. He understands where everybody is and he understands what his Antonio costume is. Antonio Rampasad. That is a trini from the band, the House of Jackie in the creative topical category. This costume depicts our national instrument in all its glory. The steel pan is known as the soul of Trinidad and Tobago's cultural identity, and its rhythm brings unity among our people. Masquerader Antonio Rampasad portraying for us Pan Explosion in the creative topical category. And I'm pretty on some sort of um, I see something he's holding in his hand, so I don't know. If that's going to manipulate some sort of or ignite some sort of pyrotechnics in the costume, it is called Pan Explosion. So maybe there's some trick to come. But he is an incredible mask player. I have been enjoying this presentation all season long as well. In fact, he was the St. Anthony's College Junior King, oh. as well as the Red Cross Children's Carnival Junior King uh, this year with this presentation. On stage, 
Masquerader Antonio Rampasad so with his portrayal Pan Explosion the from the, the band with those that light is a trini. The, the very effective use of uh, the reflective papers that, uh, that grab the light and, and really make a nice um, sparkle to the whole company. A wonderful, well-balanced, well-designed costume. I love the color distribution throughout the costume. Um, the, the design really allows the masquerader to manipulate the costume on both sides of the stage if you were an Come audience on, on both folks. sides. Let's show Antonio, Antonio is a fantastic mask player. He's been playing portrayal. Junior Carnival Pan for some explosion. time. And he's very involved with his band. Mm -hmm. And he encourages the other individuals in his band just the same. And one of the things I've noticed between the kings and the queens yes. in the juniors is they're all really carrying the entire costume. And I love that about this segment of the competition, that the young ones, A, they're in a competition with their mentors in the seniors, in the senior category to come after this. Uh, so that's very inspiring Show to some them. love for Junior King 414, Antonio Rampasad, his portrayal, Pan Explosion. And he gives way now to Junior King, 1131. So we one just one saw three Antonio one. Rampasad, and this now coming Malachi on stage, we have Gittins. Malachi his Gittins. Portrayal. His portrayal Ar is the Blue Ar Dragon. Hazal, the Blue Dragon in Ar the Ar traditional Hazel, category. The and this is tribute to the heroes of the traditional mass. And we can tell from the lighting, the Peter, that this is going to be a sensational mass. presentation. Well, let's wait and see what, how he presents it. Uh, <laughs> this, he comes from a, a huge family of dragons. Ah. <laughs> Blue dragons, also known as storm dragons. In fact, in terms of traditional carnival, figures, I think um, there's really been some emphasis on dragons. traditional carnival characters, in particularly in children's well carnival. And that is um, very encouraging they to see that, that the, the, you know, the younger ones have been educated about this art form, the traditional dancers, the traditional type of costume. And there's a lot of that representation in Children's Carnival this year. In fact, even in Adult Carnival, like for example, last night at Adam Smith Square, more and more of the traditional characters are coming out in creative presentations. going miles out of their way to avoid non-existent just basins. Their breath weapon was a line I was chatting with um, I was chatting with them backstage and um, I found out that Winston the Daniel, the grandfather, is the one who designs, he makes all the dragon heads, he while making the costume he's teaching the kids how to do the little dragon dance and so on. So it's a, it's he showed me pictures of all his little dragons that have been participating all carnival long the oh things goodness. ever. <laughs> But this one is a beautiful, that head is really, really a beautiful work of art. Um, you know, that's something that is very, very special. So he has stayed in character, you know, he's not really jumping up per se, he's kind of doing his dragon yeah. uh, thing. There, there he we goes. Go. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a beautiful color on stage, I love this cobalt color on stage. And it's interesting to see how the costumes that, are, that I'm now familiar with from daytime children's carnival transition it to a nighttime stage with stage lights and how, how effective they are also in the night. And designers take that into account because for such a situation like this. Coming up now after Malachi Gittens, we have Enzi Davis in Junior King 435. And his portrayal is the face of humanity. 
looking forward to seeing this in the African category, Ubuntu. People for your two one in the year, you two one in the year, you two one in the year. I never come here for no stand up. I come to party with my hand up. Also, the people for your two one in the year, you two one in the year. Yo, I'm not going no small fret. Let me extend my apologies. Only big fret with big flag going overhead like canopy. Rock in my back pocket with a white vest, sneakers, and wallabies. Yeah, so one of the elements about this costume that's really unique, in fact, about the whole band Ubuntu, is the designer used these black and white elements in the costume to offset the full explosion of color throughout the rest of the design. And that common thread went throughout the entire band, and I really loved it. The, the color impact of this, of this portrayal is fantastic on stage, under the stage lights at night. And the masquerade is truly enjoying his portrayal. A very, very, very port portable costume. Yes, it is. And as you said. All of them, they're fantastic. They're beautiful and you can see the enjoyment. Absolute beautiful portrayal there. And we have some more Junior Kings coming up. Peter, this is a memory. Young ones. It's it's a fantastic evening for the young ones to have the opportunity to be on the night stage at the Queen's Park Savannah and to be competing in a competition where their mentors, the senior queens and kings, are, are also in the competition. Not against them, but with them. And this is something that they look up to as, as junior contestants in a, in a big competition like this. And they do. So coming, and coming up now to the stage, we have Pan Under the Stars. Kamani's coming on stage now with his category in creative topical. And oh, 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 absolutely adorable. And they really come equipped with incredible courage, yes. uh, especially for the much younger ones to come on stage on a big stage like the Savannah stage and to present their costume. And the audience is always very appreciative of, of these portrayals. Mothers probably just said, go on stage and jump up, just jump. <laughs> Play the pan and jump. Play the pan and have fun. You could see him there looking yes. for some stage direction. There he is. He looks across at Mommy. And Kimani is only six years old. Very young contestant. Good job. You know, and if you don't do this from when they're very young, where will the, where will the art form go? Exactly. So true. From my, babes and arms. My and first carnival costume, I was 10 months old. You see? Wow, you see? 10 months. There we go. Always memorable. I was the same age as Kimani when I stepped into my first costume, six years old. Coming up, we have Joel Mack as our next junior king this evening, coming to you from the Queen's Park Savannah. Just saw young six-year-old Kimani. And now we have Joel Mack with Tanawa, the Hydra Reborn. Interesting concepts. Yeah, for sure.
And Joel really is portraying, you know, he's really into the character of the costume. He becomes part of the costume, and that's one of the things that is important for a masquerader, is to feel, really feel what it is that they're portraying. And not just pulling a costume or wearing a costume, but they, in their mind, they become that part of, integral part of what it is. And this is a, a big costume. It's 18 feet high, if I'm not mistaken. Also, um, the use of these effective reflective reflective papers allow for the wings to be this big and to be this impress, uh, um, impactful on a Savannah stage under the stage lights. Because those wings are really relatively light when you think of it. Oh my God, they're big wings, but yeah. the papers on it are very, very lightweight and very effective. Now we have coming up on stage like fish out of water. Quite an interesting depiction. Looking forward to seeing what's going to be represented this evening at the Queen's Park Savannah for the Junior Kings final. I think a fish might be involved. <laughs> just, just might be. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing this. This is Shamak Azarion Collins. He is depicting it in the creative category. When you feel like it's something, you don't feel comfortable because you are in an unusual or unfamiliar situation. Ladies and gentlemen, on stage and before you is a fish out of water, its usual place. But he is not uncomfortable or restless. He may be among people that is different from him, but he is as happy as Pappy. <laughs> He may be a fish out of water, out of his usual element, but he has quickly adapted to a new environment. Soon he would be dancing and prancing to the sound of sweet soca music. Like fish out of water, a presentation and portrayal by Master Shema Azarian Collis. From the band, Wakanao. This is their carnival presentation 2023 Movila. I think we saw a similar costume in the Junior Queen. Yes, we did. Um, the red, there was a red. There was, and also giving the depiction of lionfish. Interestingly enough, as we see him on stage right now, like a fish out of water. Definitely ensuring, oh, there we go. <laughs> Here comes the music for, there we go. It's a very pretty costume. Another one, another costume that I would love to play in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And it's very important when you're designing a costume and when you're balancing it that you keep it, keep everything, keep the, the center exactly where it's supposed to be in terms of your weight distribution so that the head doesn't drag down on the ground or the tail doesn't do something that it's not supposed to do. So here they balance it up. It's almost fitting on him as if it were a seesaw that is, you know, there's equal weight on the front and back of the costume, allowing him to carry it with ease, relative ease. Very nicely presented costume. Coming up on stage now in position number eight, we have Peter Barrow. And the question is, can this dragon dance? Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see. Can the dragon dance? This is from Passage to China. Coming up now on stage for the Junior King competition. Rag 
in my back pocket with a white vest, sneakers and wallabies. Knife tips and tight pants, I never really rate none of these. I come from brass festival and from customs and from flower mills. What's a fed for your fit and licensing fit and them had a power pill. Everybody gone nice and groovy bungee, all you pushing power still. If it's me, you don't leave me with power on a hill. I come here for no stand up. I come to party with a hand. Sort of build the drama, build the anticipation in the audience. And then as the stage lights slowly come up, the costume is revealed. Makes it more ominous, especially with portrayals like this, you know. And he's gonna do his interesting dance, his, his traditional dance with this. Can he? Can he dance? Let's see. And the, authentic the authenticity of the dance is an integral part in the, um, in the scoring as far as judges are concerned because the judges are looking for, in their presentation point, how the costume is pre presented to the audience, to the judges. Okay. Authenticity in the dance, particularly in categories like this, is an uh, important mark to make, to earn. And of course the masquerader would have, I keep talking about this in some of these portrayals, these guys have like great personalities and the personalities are reflected in these portrayals. Well, they're determined to show us that this dragon can definitely I dance. say this dragon, well, dragon is well dancing. That dragon can definitely dance. Yep, dances way across the stage, and we are just over halfway past in the Junior King category. And we have an interesting concept coming up now as well. Now, this is from the band Outside Nice, and it's called Mr. Pandemic. Of course, we've been looking forward to seeing some of these portrayals incorporating COVID 19 and what we have lived through it what these children have lived through as well. So being able to see them bring that to life is going to be something memorable. Junior King with Mr. Pandemic. Mr. Pandemic was one of those popular costumes coming through the Junior Carnival season. So let's see how he presents tonight in this um, competition. There he comes. The, the issue, the issue with the nighttime presentations is when, in the attempt to add drama and use selective stage lighting, you're really changing the color scheme of the costume. Because this costume in daylight is a vivid lime green costume, uh, predominantly. And just now with the stage lights, when it was dim, you wouldn't really get in that vibrancy. So it's not until the stage lights come up and he center stage. So this is Josiah, Josiah Sutton. So that was Josiah Sutton, Mr. Pandemic from National Treasures 2023. And coming on to stage now, we have another Josiah, and he's portraying Midnight Robber. Again, another traditional mask Another costume. traditional, yeah, and I love the Midnight Robber. Let's see if he does a speech, because that would be what the Midnight Robber would do. That so would be absolutely Let's see fantastic. if that's a part of his presentation as they prepare the stage for his arrival. Josiah Ferrying. And as you were saying, Peter, you know, they come in in the dark, of course, to set the stage, get us ready. And what better way to bring in a midnight robber than with some darkness and some mystery? Let's see. What can it be? What can it be? 
This, this is from the band Outside Nice. Another beautiful depiction as we see our children keeping our culture alive. So important. Very, very at good this that they do that. Time. So we can hear the midnight robber coming on stage in absolute darkness. Oh, it's midnight. It's midnight. <laughs> Somewhere. And he warns on his arrival with the blowing of his whistle. There is a microphone in position, so I presume he's coming to do his speech. Midnight. Midnight. Midnight! That is what it has called me. I come to steal your heart with the music of my band, my mask. And the drumming of my hand. Fear me as my voice echoes in your brain, which leaves you defenseless in excruciating pain. Can't even not stop until I say so. You have a problem. Come, let me help you go. You will remember me, the terror of your dreams. For I am midnight who pillaged your heart's extremes. <laughs> Start the music. Best late entry of the century. Well, I was very drawn into that speech. It was a very dramatic presentation. And to memorize it and to yeah. perform it uh, in this very beautifully created Midnight Robber. Very contemporary looking Midnight Robber. But sticking to tradition with this ominous speech, which all Midnight Robbers uh, do. Very good pres dramatic presentation with that speech. So in the design here, typically the Midnight Robber would be wearing this broad brim hat. Okay. But to, to, to give you added height and more uh, presence, they have attached this to, uh, on top of a backpack sort of scenario and the masquerader wears it as a backpack. Definitely bringing in the presence of traditional masks and in fact, that band outside Nice has brought the entire of traditional masks to life for Carnival 2023 after, of course, being inside for two years. And we can see the joy on the children's faces. What did that speech scare you? Oh, my goodness. Uh. You know, it reminded me, Peter, when I was a child, any time at Carnival I heard that whistle blow, I was ready to go and hide. Well, that's, that's what happens. And when the midnight robber is near and that whistle is blown, be very afraid. Be very afraid. And the height, the height was so captivating as well we're going to junior king number 12 Jarrell peters now his portrayal is a musical explosion well let's see what that is a musical explosion looking forward to see what is musical explosion in trinidad and tobago of course the first thing we'll think of is steel pan let's see This is a this is a really nicely constructed costume in that um, the side pieces with those geometric shapes where the musical notes uh, and the pan motif is, is applied on. Uh, it's an unusual shape. It's usually sort of a downward circular skirt, but I like that they've kept these these inverted sort of geometric shapes. And then you see all the other elements of the various musical instruments. Seeing also they've incorporated um, the drums, the saxophone, the steel pan as well. Well, of course, steel pan. Yeah. 
And one of the nice things in this design is that they get the bongo drums in the foreground to have a lot of movement where they could tend to be very stiff in their construction, but they have it in such a way that they're, they're dancing nicely with them. A beautiful depiction there of our music and our culture here this evening for the Junior Kings of Carnival. Now we do have another Junior King coming to the stage. This is under the category Creative Topical. Interesting there, the guardian of the Shaolin Temple. Yeah, I saw a few uh, along that theme coming up in the, well, in the past Children's Carnival competitions. And this also comes from the band Passage to China as well. So this is the second that we have seen in the Junior Kings final this evening at the Queen's Park Savannah stage. And one of our last Junior Kings to appear tonight. So oh. the competition is almost ending for the juniors. And then we look forward to the to the senior presentation of the Queens, of the Kings and Queens. Queens first and then the Kings. King. King. The time has definitely flown by this evening. It very really good, has. a very good run of the of the show's uh, production. So here we have on stage uh, the guardian of the Shaolin Temple from the band Passage to China. Another very young masquerader. Yes. A beautiful depiction there, of course, of the guardian of the Shaolin Temple. As you mentioned, another young masquerader. Now, he would have entered along with the other young king from Eccles School for the junior king of Carnival. I love the beard. I loved it, I have to say. And for such a young guy. Yes. <laughs> Carnival Monday night. Monday night. February 20th will be brass, 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 and more brass as the National Carnival Commission presents Brass, brass Bacchanal. Brass Bacchanal. Our third edition at Festival City, Queen's Park, Savannah. Starting 8.30 p.m. Ten bands brass, brass. will do battle for the first prize of $100,000. Brass Bacchanal is a cooler event, so bring your coolers and your crew. No oversized coolers, no glass bottles allowed. Come and remember the days when brass bands rule. Tickets are only $125, so get yours now. Tickets available at Cache's and Java Nation stores nationwide. The NCC head office, Queen's Park Savannah, and online at islandetickets.com. For more information, call 480-5100. Who will win the first prize of $100? $100,000! Brass Bacchanal will take you back to the good old days. If you're a Brass fan, don't miss this one. Brass Bacchanal! Welcome to tonight's Lotto Plus Draw, supervised by independent auditors KPMG and presided over by the National Lottery's Control Board. Good luck, everyone! Good evening, it is Wednesday, 15th February, 2023. We begin with our Lotto Plus Multiplier Draw, where you can make your money multiply and win up to $1 million. First, let's see this evening's Multiplier.
And the multiplier is 4. That number again is 4. Now let's draw your lucky lot of best numbers where you could be the winner of $8,604,392.99. The first number is 24. Second, 21. The third, 27. The fourth is 29. And the fifth is 22. Now for tonight's Powerball. The number three. I will repeat tonight's winning Lotto Plus numbers in any order. 24, 21, 27, 29, and 22. The Powerball number is 3 and the multiplier is 4. Congratulations to all our lucky winners. Our Lotto Plus multiplier costs an additional $5 and applies to non-jackpot prizes. The NLCB urges you to try on new bet slips. Players must be 18 years and over. Please continue to play safely and responsibly. Join us on Saturday at 8.30 p.m. for the next Lotto Plus draw. Remember, winners always play Lotto Plus. Got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain, and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way to flavor my day with something new, and I've got room for you. Let loose and live a little, get close and share a little. And share a little Give in and taste a little You'll fall in love with Creamery Novelties Enjoy new Creamery Novelties Live a little the Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Blue Waters Life is better with Blue Waters Welcome back to the, well, we have two evening, of course, talking about the Junior Kings and Queens Finals. And coming up soon, we have the Senior Kings and Queens Finals right here at the Queens Park Savannah. We just witnessed the final Junior King of the evening. And Peter, we were mesmerized. That young masquerader, Samuel Jackson, really uh, puts on a show for the, for the audience. He did put on. It, it was it was mesmerizing to see him come on stage, use the entire of the Queen's Park Savannah stage as well. And even though he appeared last of the Junior Kings, he scored. Uh, uh, he was the top scorer at the prelims level of this competition on Sunday. Well, so that that was our last uh, Junior King tonight. As we wait to see what the big. Queens and the big kings have on in store for us. Looking forward to seeing what they have in store. And of course, as with always with good housekeeping right now, the stage is being cleared of any possible debris, preparing the way for the senior kings and queens semifinals at the Queen's Park Savannah. It's wonderful to be back at home. And we need to say thank you so much to our sponsors, Blue Waters. Stay hydrated. I mean, without it, what would happen? Life is better with Blue Waters, Absolutely. that is for sure. And I'm sure those young masqueraders right now, they're going to be enjoying some sort of beverage after some really enthralling and really energetic performances as well. I really, really enjoyed all of the presentations and they really put a lot more, more um, effort into how they present their costumes at this competition compared to the children's carnival during the day. Uh, this Savannah stage on a night like tonight for finals, they put out all the, all the um, 
all the stops. They really did bring out all the stops. And I'm proud of them all. Yeah, and right? amazing. it was amazing, amazing to see from six years old to probably maybe 12, 13 years old. Everybody came out and it's great to see, of course, the family and the friend support as well of the entire band at the side of the stage. We heard thunderous applause when some came on. You would think right now that the entire Queen's Park Savannah was full, not just the grand stand and they've done well as well i thought it was going to rain a little bit for a while it, it, a little blessing happened yeah. but nothing to talk about nothing. but the audience is uh, is enjoying the show so far and i hope the tv audience is as well yes. because we're here yes we are here we're trying you know we hope that you're having a wonderful time of course good evening to all of our viewers at ttt if you're watching on facebook at ttt live online or perhaps listening on talk city 91.1 fm or watching us at ttt.live good evening to wherever you are throughout the world if you are watching from abroad and missing home we're bringing you that warmth from none other than the beautiful queen's park savannah it is great to be back after two years now one of the things peter that definitely struck me this year is the traditional mass basically coming back to life and seeing the youth really embracing that as we were talking about with the dragons and the way that they were dancing and, and it's like it's like carrying the torch into the next generation and the education of those elements of, of our carnival are very important and they're teaching them at the school level they're teaching them in the communities uh, to, to learn these traditional dances to learn the art of making these traditional costumes so the papier mache the wire bending the the dancing of the particular sailor mass or dragon dance or cow whatever they, they really are starting them from very young. And you look at in Children's Carnival, you see how small they are, sometimes three and four years yeah. old, and they're already learning to do these dances. All right, let's take a break. It's beautiful to see. But let's take a short break, and we will be right back to you from the Queen's Park Savannah. You're watching TTT, where we live for local all day. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final, powered by Blue Waters. Life is better with Blue Waters. Are you depressed and bogged down by problems? Then meet astrologer Narashima. He is an expert in astrology, numerology, Vashtu Palm, face, photo, date of birth reading. He solves problems in marriage, love, relationships, reunite with your ex, businesses, job, health, and removes all evil spirits, negative energy, bad luck permanently. Home consultation is available. Call astrologer Narashima at 304-3506. That's 304-3506. On stage. And on stage right now, you're seeing the senior queen of carnival. This is the first of the costumes. And we have 
it all live on this beautiful evening. It is indeed a beautiful evening here at the Queen's Park Savannah Carnival City. So the senior queen of Carnival is on stage. In fact, just moved off and we had our first queen, which was the spirit of Carnival. Tribute to Roland St. George and Takia Fletcher Marshall, the masquerader. So creating a beautiful scene here at the Queen's Park Savannah on TTT, the home of Carnival. I am Sharon Pitt, taking over from Natasha and delighted to bring you now the fourth queen, or listed as number four, but of course second that we're seeing on stage. The mother of all carnivals, celebrations, and she is Priya Nagasa. I'll be joined by Judith for expert color commentary. But let's take in the beauty of our portrayal, the mother of all carnival celebrations. Hello. It's been two years, hiatus is over, and we have the mother of all carnivals. So lots of color, beautiful use of color, and we've got um, satin fabrics, of course, the gold braid being picked up by the lights here, the lame gold again, netting, spangles, gemstones, they're all there, really creating a wonderful picture here on stage, and she is dancing her mass, she is Priya Hello. Nagasa with the mother of all carnivals. the movement of this particular costume I guess um, nowadays with the modern materials she's able to manipulate her costume freely all the fiberglass the aluminium rods all those the, the modern materials hello 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 Hello, 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 hello. And the designer tells us that he is celebrating our people through the use of color. And there she goes, Priya Nagasa with the mother of all carnivals, celebrations. So we've had so many beautiful costumes already for the evening. You would have seen the juniors providing us with so much wonderful entertainment. And now it's time for the seniors. Of course, it is the time for the seniors as they do their uh, thing. In this, the semi-final round of the Kings and Queens of Carnival. So number five is going to be Kioni, Winter's Enchantress, and this is Nisa Natu Hari. She is going to be crossing the stage here and uh, showing us her mask. It's from the category Fantasy. So we look forward to this. It's number five, and she is Nisa Natu Hari. And once again, we thank our sponsors, of course, and that includes Samaru's, the international carnival supplier since 1949. So a lot of drama on stage. Let's see what the LED lighting will do here.
And as the lights come up, um, what you can first see, what strikes you, of course, are those um, eight, those aluminum rods creating the backdrop to the masquerader. Um, you know, powerful, beautiful stones. And she's dancing her mass, definitely stunning costume here with glittering white, icy blues. So she is the winter's enchantress, Kioni. As she turns, which she will in just a moment, we will be seeing that skirt, the beauty, the full beauty of the skirt is quite a wide costume. It's meant to symbolize a blanket of freshly fallen snow. And as we can see, if you look at the feathers, beautiful detail at the end of those aluminum rods with the netting. Ah, there she turns. Billowing, billowing in the back there. So she's a goddess, Kioni, winter's enchantress. Again, this is one of those costumes on wheels, as opposed to those who carry the costume from the backpack. But again, I suppose to enable that billowing skirt. She makes her way off stage. Nisa Natu Hari. Uh, we have uh, the Queen making her way off stage here at the Queen's Park Savannah. And I think definitely the wind w helped with the costuming because it is the wind billowing. So giving that skirt that lovely effect here on stage. That Queen was so wonderful. Uh, she was actually a Queen who used to, uh, you know, down to her makeup. Uh, she had to, to portray this winter evening and as you saw the, the colors were chosen and you could actually see the sparkle in the in the yes, uh, those, costume. Those, uh, uh, that icy glittery yes sort of giving the effect of crystal and for those who've ever uh, gone through especially freshly fallen snow you do you do you could actually that, hear the yes, crunch the, the yes. yeah so we have we have uh, Quincy Ann Alexander, who is our next queen to cross the stage. And it's Disukuya. Here she comes, the sexy ball of flame. And what a wonderful costume. This costume was illuminated, as you can see. And they used LED lights. And those strips, um, when she first appeared, uh, you, you would just see the outline of them. And Disukuya is supposed to be a ball of fire. And uh, the creator, the director, told us that um, he was actually trying to achieve some very creative stuff rather than doing a ball of fire as a, as a fearful kind of folklore character. Looking he for made sexy. It, yes. He, <laughs> he did it to, uh, you know, be, took artistic license to really create it. And we see those beautiful flames um, sailing across the wings of the Sukuya. It's interesting, this year we're seeing a lot of LED strips. Yes. Um, and Especially in your hoorah. things, right? Yes, yes. yes. Hurrah for that because people are, designers are making use of the technology. And they're taking it into a different realm altogether. Um, I think, ah, uh, he knows how to dance that costume. He's turned backwards so that the breeze won't take him. As you can see, he's having quite a battle there. I hope he wins. Uh, very difficult. Oh, so sorry, she. <laughs> Across the stage, and it's meant to, of course, depict uh, seductive flames. 
the wind, I think, may be a bit of a challenge for yes. some of our, because so many of them have tall costumes and the height picking up. Well, the, we know the, what, the wings. what, yes, in the Savannah, you have to be very careful when you're doing a portrayal um, on the stage because if, you, if the wind picks up, you know, you could go flying down the, <laughs> onto yes, the other side. Onto the other side. But I think on the whole, she managed it well, as you said. I think experience or maybe an experienced voice telling her to turn to make yes, sure that absolutely. the wind does not overwhelm the costuming yeah. so that our queens and we... And We'll be having our queens moving in the semi-final round here on TTT, the home of Carnival, as we begin to um, get even closer to the finals on Dimash Gras night. So next up, we have uh, number nine. Maria Marie Elegant. Elegant. Her costume, Cleansing Fire. Cleansing Fire in the African category. Limbo. Limbo. So now, we have a tradition in Trinidad and Tobago about limbo. Um, it is a dance that's done uh, at wakes and uh, funereal, but um, even in the Christian Catholic, limbo is a place where you wait. So it's, it's, it's a temporary situation. And now we've got used through Julia Edwards and people like that with the dance. Yes. So we look forward to this costume limbo, and this is a Patrick Roberts co uh, costume. Okay, a, um, man, a man who is well versed in the mass, in the design. As we all know, the family, the family is involved. On stage, we see cleansing fire from Mary Ellingor paying homage, we are told, to singing Sandra, who died during the... Um, pandemic period, that awful time. So we look forward to the drama on her, uh, on stage with this uh, beautiful, very wide costume, paying homage. And of course, we know that Singing Sandra was very much um, with the Orisha faith, the, uh, and the, 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 the music evoking that cleansing fire. So yes, l uh, let me um, correct that, more uh, Baptist than Orisha. So here we have this wonderful costume again by Patrick Roberts in the full African tradition, uh, using the iridescence of uh, the silver and white that gives you the purity of intent that he has once again um, echoing the limbo and the, the, the Juliet and she's really dancing that costume. The thing about Patrick's costumes are the freedom and that the uh, relief that you have um, you can see it in the round or everything works and you get that movement with the cane and so on that uh, he's used the silver very well. And there we have the red. Yes, absolutely. Cleansing fire. Do enjoy. Well, we have the national colors depicted on this costume. At the back now you'll see the red. Although it's a predominantly white costume but uh, beautiful, just delicately picking out those colors there. And her dancers definitely enhancing her presentation on stage. This is Marie Elegor with Cleansing Fire. They've selected an appropriate um, music track for her. And of course, the rhythm of the drum always uh, executes best. And of course, the dance that is appropriate to move that costume. The detail in that is absolutely beautiful. The white, um, different textures of her um, skirt and on the headpiece. Right now, let me burn and rise in love. 
físico. Mariella Gore dancing her way across the stage here at Carnival City, the Queen's Park Savannah in Port of Spain. And uh, definitely a costume that stands out. Uh, the use of white is always uh, one that um, is very effective when you're portraying costumes on stage. And she did portray beautifully that Patrick Roberts uh, costume and a tribute once again to singing Sandra who died uh, a couple of years ago. And I think it's a wonderful tribute to her. And we move on now to the... Leah Noel in position number six, queen of the recycled Zephyrs. That should be fun, Sharon. Yes, it should indeed. So it's uh, a case of some of the queens, they're not appearing in the order that they should have appeared, perhaps arriving a little late. So this is number six well from what i heard it isn't to shoot they they said splash so oh they did no, say splash. No, number 11. it is number aisha 11. blaze splash the spirit of water and they're creating the mood the uv light again with that white and silver that really depicts well water So we await the lights to go up so that we can see the detail of this costume. Yet another costume with those uh, aluminium rods. So we're having similar shapes with our queens. And again, uh, the, the topic seems to be very popular this year, water. We've seen uh, some depictions of snow with the blues, and now we have water portrayed by Aisha Blaze. You can actually see the shape of the splash uh, that they've created even at the top of the costume as it spreads out. And you, you could see if you drop a penny or whatever into the water, you'll see how it splashes out. And I think they've accomplished that rather well. A beautiful costume that gives you the full depth just through the use of blue, silver, and white. So we had Splash, the Spirit of Water. That reminds uh, us to uh, thank one of our sponsors, Blue Waters, for making this broadcast possible on TTT, the home of Carnival, on this very windy evening in the Queen's Park Savannah, which of course will enhance some presentations, but then may hinder some. But whether the wind does hinder or not, the beauty of the costuming is in, in no doubt. So, Judith, we've got uh, some 20 queens to see in this semi-final round of the semi-final round of the Senior Queens of Carnival. So, so now we have our Zessa Queen. So, this is uh, a one that I remember from the preliminaries and some work has been done so we've got all the recycling uh, material used here she's queen of the recycled zessa leah noel 
in the original category, and indeed, this is pretty original. And as of course, if you are non-Trinidadian, you might not know the word Zessa, but Zessa is, um, you know, when, when you zest, you, you have the movement towards. So the, she has the understanding of zesting with the recycling situation. And so the whole costume is recyclable. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Trinidad and Tobago and its carnival, we know about recycling. The, our steel pan is the element of recycling. And here we have the laundry baskets and each of them has been chosen very carefully so that the laundry baskets are green. And of course, green is a, a part of the whole recycling and uh, um, thinking about how you really cycle. Uh, Sharon, even the plastics that they've used, the bottles, uh, they've chosen each of the colors significantly to represent these letters locks. They've used the black bottles. Yes, the, I, I, you know, it really is um, but quite clever. Fit, clever and fitting into the category which is original so as we look at the bottles and water bottles and the laundry baskets as you say and the work that's been done to, to enhance the costume in time for the semi-finals they've managed to take all the bottle cup um, corks and caps uh, to, to represent different things, the center of the, of the, like a floral image. And so you have a myriad of textures there. The water bottles give us a wonderful colored skirt and so on. So Leon Noel didn't take a lot of, of time on stage, but uh, made her impact, made her point, hopefully, the importance of recycling, upcycling, and as Judith just said, we have been doing that for generations um, when we never used to throw away anything. So most uh, Trinbegonian homes would have um, loads of what we call handle bag, plastic bags that we uh, use for various things after buying our groceries. So on stage now we have yet another queen coming up. Laura so Rampersad. It's going Athena. to be Laura. Rampersad, and she is Athena, goddess of war and wisdom. And of course she has those wonderful coquier brooms, so it's very significant in our cultural genre. Uh, the white outfit again is very spiritual and she is cleansing the stage. And of course, there's always the significance of how you wrap that head tie. And Sharon, she has the beautiful skirt on that she can move using the skirt for that purpose. Right, so now we can see her in her regal splendor. And she does the tradition ballet dance uh, with the rosettes that are picked up in the center of the dress, uh, as in the Juliet, adding to the ornate and And all those textures are so wonderfully put together, um, Sharon. You have the, the her, her, her top that is embossed and the net, just wonderful. The sweeper. So she's sweeping away all the evil here on the stage at the Queen's Park Savannah tonight as we take you through the Queen's semifinals. And of course, of great significance is the Queen of the Bands, which will be adjudged on Dimash Gra, Carnival Sunday night, when the Mayor of Port of Spain on Juve morning will uh, open the city and declare the Juve open. 
and the Bacchanal will start. Indeed. Well, this is a costume that um, is very easy to manipulate. She can certainly play herself on stage. But at the same time, it is a beautiful piece of work. You see all the layers of the, of the costume there. So you really get the depth. And as I said before, based on the Juliet and the ballet, uh, the ballet being a very significant dance in our folklore in Trinidad. So she, in fact, was the washerwoman sweeper, Alison Fredericks, in the creative category. Certainly sweeping away. Any evil or bad spirits on stage here at uh, the Queen's Park Savannah, Carnival City in Trinidad and Tobago. As we bring you the senior queens of Carnival on TTT, the home of Carnival. Uh, so we have some 20 queens to see and uh, then followed by the senior kings of Carnival. So next up will be the Athena goddess of war and wisdom. Laura Rampersad. This costume is really very interesting. Creative topical category and let's get them to set the scene for us. So as the lights have come on, we see it is uh, a costume some 17 feet high and 26 feet wide. But again, very light materials. She's carrying it on her back and therefore she's able to dance a mass very well indeed. As she turns the back, it's meant to uh, show victory and the front is, uh, as you see, the shields and the spears, so she indeed is ready for war. And in fact, she won the um, preliminary round, Sharon, with 406 points. So that tells you of the beauty of this costume, also according to the judges, uh, a lot of wonderful work. Uh, if you see it close up, it's very detailed. And we actually have feathers here, not imitation or, or uh, echoed in fabric. She's actually used feathers and foil to great effect. Again, one of the wonderful things about the costume is that uh, as you see it on the night sky, um, the gold and the, the, the cell, um, paper and foil is just looks as if it's suspended there because it's placed on, on the, netting. The, the netting, yes. So there she goes. She is the Somehow goddess she was of very quick. wisdom. She I thought she was rather yes. quick, especially one who topped in the preliminaries. Yes. But, um, you know, that's all uh, going to mean that it's going to be a short night if the queens continue... Uh, moving across as quickly as they have been doing so far. So the beautiful fuchsia, the gold, picking up the lights here, I'm sure she made quite an impact. Jacqueline Collins-Taylor, a sambista, the samba dancer, a creative topical, and she's dancé, dancé. Okay, so we, we know that the samba is from Brazil. It's the Afro-Brazilian dance that is rather difficult to do, actually. So You tried I, it. I have tried. I have tried. <laughs> Haven't yet succeeded. But she's showing us the moves. 
And it's really interesting that she manages to get movement in the midst of that costume that is really um, quite heavy and large. Of course, you have the appearance of some wheels there, and I think you actually allowed three wheels, which she has there. A good combination of colors. And it's interesting that they use the gold in the center towards her. If you look at all the samba costumes that we see coming out of Brazil Carnival, which incidentally is the same time as ours, um, you will see that they use a lot of uh, gold and so on to great effect. Uh, So we had as it, as it the turns, samba we got a really beautiful shot of the samba dancer there, surrounded uh, by those feathers. So this is a, a shimmering. And she's having costume. some difficulty with that wind. I'm just Indeed. hoping that um, they've schooled her to turn in order to make sure that she dances the costume and it doesn't dance her. Well, I think that will also encourage our masqueraders to move across the stage, if they can, rather quickly. But she, it's adding it's to her it. movement, isn't it? Yes. So that's, that's a plus. She's handling it very well. Very well, very well. And she's dancing the costume well, despite everything, and it's about samba. Well, this really is beautiful how it, in, it sort of undulates as, as she moves. Green and gold and she blue foil that they've pieces, intermingled. Yes, yes. So it's like a sort of ruched thing that that they, you know they've done with the foil. It's a great effect. Lovely texture they managed to get, and then they created a border in the gold, which is really rather beautiful. Jacqueline Collins Taylor, and uh, she was uh, the samba dancer, uh, Sambista. <laughs> uh, started off showing us her samba, and then, of course, the soca moves took over as she made a splendid, shimmering spectacle here on the Queen's Park Savannah. And just to remind you that we have our sponsors, the International Carnival Supply since 1949, and that is uh, Samaroos. We also thank B-Mobile, we thank Blue Waters, we thank Nescafe and Creamery Novelties, White Oak and Stamina Energy, and of course, TTT Limited. So we have, uh, coming on stage will be uh, number 13, it should be, um, and this is going to be Debbie Aguilera Sammy. Sammy. It's called Pan in All Its Glory, a tribute to Pantron Vago's 60th anniversary. And she told me some wonderful things, Sharon. The, all the, the silver that is hanging down. She was saying on, on it echoes what would happen with the, the pan and how they use the pan, the decorative um, for the tapestry on the, the pan racks. So she's extended that. And then she's got the red, white, and black fabric, uh, the Trinidad and Tobago colors. And very, she's got very the pan sticks. Yes. yes, beautiful detail here. But what is interesting is that a lot of them are using the fabric itself to create the pattern on the fabric itself to create the drama. 
So she managed to get the red, white, and black stripes. And as you see, it's moving through rather smoothly. Again, echoing the traditional carnival costume of the sailor, the traditional sailor, which of course is very much into the pan, right? Yes. So yes, and the, the pan bell replicated uh, uh, on uh, the center of her costume, as well as on either side, framing her. This is a striking costume indeed, and the and she the added the 60 it. years of pan in the center. So we've got the formation of the Williams uh, spiderweb pan there. Beautiful movement, and she's really enjoying herself as she pays tribute to Pan Trinbago. The panorama, 60 years. Well, she's definitely getting into it because, as I say, she's showing us she can use her pan sticks on this beautiful costume, which is Pan in all its glory, which is a tribute to Pan Trinbago's 60th, the diamond anniversary of Pan Trinbago. So, she is and of course, making her way she, off stage. The use of the mask is really rather clever, which takes us into the original uh, costuming and masking that is uh, so synonymous with Trinidad's carnival. Well, I think she got so many um, motifs in there. Uh, so apart from the fact that a lot of uh, steel bands actually had sailor masks, that's how they came out in the early days, a lot of them with sailor masks. We also have that... Um, message that it is the diamond anniversary of Pantron Bago. So we have coming on stage now Shelley Watson. How majestic is the white peacock? Creative uh, topical metamorphosis. There seems to be a pattern, Sharon, where the, uh, the maker of the mask and the costume pe um, people uh, ask for a piece of music and lighting. So in this case, for the metamorphosis, it's quite uh, necessary. <laughs> So it seems as though we've got special lighting, special white lighting for this costume. And as Judith, you just said, uh, the designers and the masqueraders, the band leaders have learned just how much lighting and music can enhance their presentation here at the Queen's Park Savannah. So Metamorphosis is on stage. How majestic is the white peacock? And the band's name is Metamorphosis. So Shelley Watson. Very wide costume again. It's um, spanning. Oh, up! It's the height is 20 feet. Height is 18 feet. Length 16 feet. Spanning 20 feet. So it's a large costume, and the masqueraders in the body of the costume. So again, Judith, we know now that, of course, we talk often about the fact that the craft is being lost of when, you know, you like the uh, peacock head. But certainly the case here, it's not that case. So you can see the beauty of the work as they've crafted that uh, peacock head. Crafted by wirebender Robert Miller. So we will be back with uh, more senior queens of carnival here at the Queen's Park Savannah after a short break right here on TTT, the home of carnival. 
the Senior Kings and Queens semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Stamina Energy. Rise to the occasion. The Senior Kings and Queens semi-finals. <laughs> Where the heart goes, the soul is bound to follow. We're invested in you. Asailing, and this is from the band Crochet Caribbean Style. From one island to another, on stage we have Joanne Thompson. And of course, Joanne Thompson's costume is so reminiscent of the Borokit. And for those of you who don't know what the Borokit is, it is a replication of a, a, a donkey, Buro Kit, uh, in Spanish, which is part of our tradition in the mass. And she's carrying, as would the skirt, etc., the costume, the boat itself. So the skirt of the boat, as you can see that wonderful movement with the sea that's replicated and the, she's driving a boat, a pirogue, going down to Venezuela no doubt. So the crochet is very, very prominent. She is wasting no time on stage, so it must be a speedboat. <laughs> And we'll be back with our next queen after a short break. Kings and Queens semifinals and the Kings and Queens final powered by. Lady Wabin, how are you so hurry? Sorry, brethren, on a mission. Well, look at thing in here. I don't get thing for my baby doll costume already. Samaroos really have everything for carnival. Excuse me, madam, does you have any of these in Dam Lorraine side? No, madam, I does not work here, but Samaroos has his everything for children. Mars, look, eh. Samaroos is really the carnival store. Wait now, I switch off my car? Look, hello. Back in the back in the Let's go. Back in the back Very tall costume here, 30 feet high, 35 feet wide. On stage, it's Dana Rampasad, and her portrayal is For the Love of TNT, a tribute to Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, what stands out is that beautiful red. Red, which could be our scarlet ibises. Red, which could be the uh, Shaconia. Red, which of course can be uh, representing, you know, the vibrancy of our people, Judith. And they've got the the rays uh, of, of of the scarlet ibis so beautifully. The feathers, but the way they put it is like a sun ray around their heads, and it, it it really shows you the feathers that they've cut out. In the absence of actual feathers, you get that same feathery look through the use of the very clever artistry there. And of course, in number three being very significant, they have three scarlet ibis. And in the Pantheon, you would always do three, five, seven, or nine. And then at the back, you would get that fan-like shape at the back 
to, to just portray the strength of what she's trying to deal with here. Dana Rampersad, the love. Wonders of the world of Trin Trinidad and Tobago. I, 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 that's a swamp, clearly. Um, yes, and uh, that the is mango, uh, yes, one Caribbean of our swamp wonders could have been. that she... And very prominent, the flag, the Trinidad and Tobago flag The there. double chaconia is in the between there chaconia. that adds the depth to the costume. Uh, the only thing I think they've missed is our uh, pitch lake because that's supposed to be one of the wonders. But uh, Well, again, a lot of um, steel rod, uh, fiberglass, and we will be back with more queens, senior queens from the Queen's Park Savannah right here on TTT, the home of Carnival. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by White Oak. This Carnival 2023, TSB, Iowa George, and Team Not Siding bring to you Carnival Come Back. Carnival Monday night is we own. Meet us at Victoria Avenue. Dress code is your best Monday wear. Featuring Voice, Second Star, Nyla Blackman, Skinny Fabulous, Trinidad Killer, Your Brother, Tepa, the Caltasia, Problem Child, Natty and Thunder, Allison Hyde. Get those tickets at Aria Smash Tech, Woodford Street, opposite Lucky Dollar, Modern Basic, Trin City Mall, Marco Polo, West Mall, Swagger Clothing, Port of Spain, Booth 81, New City Mall, Trin City Boulevard, Henry Street, Port of Spain, and Pappy's Waterhouse. Sponsored by CTT, NLCB, Forest Park, Punch and Rub, the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, and Karen. It's the way we play. Carnival Monday night is we own Carnival Come Back at Victoria Avenue. Dana Rampersad for the love of Trinidad and the, Tobago. Well, Trinidad. that was the one we saw before. This is the Sorry, emergence Ruth of the Barabal Lily. Yes. Uh, Ruth Adams Mendes. The emergence of the Maraval lily, and, and it's also known as the peace lily. Uh, there's Ruth in the center there. If you remember, you would have seen her costume, that one of the junior masks uh, she portrayed. And here she's having a ball. Um, she's really known for the papier mache and um, guacano leaves in the center to get the, the texture in the middle of the lily. Um, very beautifully made costume, got the veins of the leaves and everything, and used the sequence at the end, gold sequence, to give you the detail of the Marva lily and the leaves. She's got the veins again with a huge collar uh, to bring out her mass. She's chosen those colors rather well, the gold and the green, and it's peace lily. Yes, I, I, I can't get my peace lilies to bloom. So I congratulate Ruth Adams Mendez for her beautiful portrayal and reminding us, of course, of the importance of our water courses and um, the whole ecology of Trinidad and Tobago that we have to really protect. Watch. We must protect, and of course, coming from Maraval, you would know that um, we have the Maraval River passing through there, and it's it's changed. Too much housing, indiscriminate yeah. housing on the hills. But here we are calling for the emergence of the Maraval lily to once again also bring peace to the neighborhood. So the messages are, are aplenty in this costume. Of course, she has the Elizabethan skirt that allows for all the mechanisms that are underneath, and yet she can move very freely. It's a beautifully designed costume. And, I, and I, th I commend her for that. Um, we need to really consider the story that she's telling, which is raconter moi une histoire. In other words, tell me a story in Patwa. And the Let's, take a break. Let's take a break and we'll be back. Kings and Queens semifinals and the junior. The best for your baby is at thebesttoys.com. From the best strollers, car seats, baby carriers, high chairs, booster seats, rockers, jumpers and bouncers, walkers, baby blankets, feeding accessories, bathtubs, 
gyms and play mats, play pens, cribs, baby swings, changing tables, diaper bags, clothing and accessories, and the widest range of educational toys. We carry Infantino, Dr. Brown, Avent, Graco, Chico, Fisher Price, VTech, Leapfrog, Disney Baby, Delta Children, Medela, and Twist Shake. Visit us in store at Movie Town, Port of Spain, Forces Flagship, McBean, or Eastgate Small, Trin City. Or shop online now at dbesttoys.com. No credit card required. And remember, the best for your baby is at dbesttoys.com. And once again, we have another costume on stage celebrating Trinidad and Tobago. So red, white, black, the name of the costume is 60th Independence Celebration she's, she's done to Rona well, rather well using the fabric again, uh, the diamond shape in the fabric to create that tapestry uh, for the costume to give tribute once again. Clearly, the pans uh, in vogue this year. So everybody's doing pan, uh, tributes to Pan, which is wonderful. And again, the ballet type skirt. No, that's an Elizabethan skirt that we have there. Uh, and, uh, and there's the Chaconia as well. All yes. the symbols. All the symbols of Trinidad, Trinidad and, Tobago. and Tobago. Yeah. The national bird. which is, of course, the Scarlet Ibis, gracing the top of the costume. Seeing all the gold braid, the... And of course, nerves, they've, they've used the a lot of recycled things, things here as well. All to the, the good. Straw effects uh, that they've colored. Beautiful headpiece. And of course, that's one of the intrinsic things that when you stand on the road and you look down, you see the various levels of a costume, which makes for you know a good masquerade, yes. especially with the queen of the band, uh, because her entourage follows. And that's part of the tradition that you have something at the top, something at the bottom, and then you have the breadth of the costume that allows you to play the mask so well. And wonderful, the breeze is working for her. Working for her. She also has wheels. And she makes her way off stage, the senior queen. And we'll be back after a break. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Nescafe. Oh, I've got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain. And have my scoop of fun I'm on my way To flavor my day With something new And I've got room for you Let loose and live a little Get close and share a little Give in and taste a little You'll fall in love with creamery Novelties of life and live a little I Get close and share a little Taste a little, you'll fall in love with Creamery Novelties. Enjoy new Creamery Novelties. Live a little. Back in the Bacchanal. Let's go. Back in the Bacchanal. Back in the Bacchanal. Back in the Bacchanal. We're back in the Bacchanal. We're back in the Bacchanal. We're back in the Bacchanal. Yeah, we also can't even. Here we have a queen coming on stage using the stilts, the moko jambi, as we would call it, which, as Judith has pointed out, is very uh, much predominant in this carnival and all to the good because I think the, the height creates that kind of feeling, uh, a special kind of feeling as they cross the stage. Well, of course, the tradition of the uh, moko jambi is the protector of communities and so on. So we have the so previously, of course, uh, only males uh, played 
Moko Jumbies. Now we've changed into, especially with Chanel. Uh, she was last year's queen, as you know, and here we have her again. Uh, the short person is, o the, it, there's always a smaller version that creates that pantheon that is part of the Moko Jumbi um, retinue. And here we have the sky and the stars and the wonderful costuming. So she set a scene there with people on chairs and so on. Yes, because she's a nightclub dancer. And the name of the costume, Eme, a dancer of freedom's cousinship to epitaphs of fate. One of the things about these Moko Jumpies is that they manage to get the correct fabric and everything that allows the movement at that level. And what used to happen before, Sharon, is that um, on all of the buildings, like on Charlotte Street and so on, they would ask for money, just like the devils and so on. They would get collect money from the people at the balconies. But of course, they can't do that anymore. The, bu the buildings are very uh, tall now. And, yes. uh, and not many in the balconies, especially Frederick Street, when you had those wonderful old buildings. Buildings still existing. Beautiful textures, the stars and everything they managed to create. And looking at the headpiece, of course, it's always fascinating to, to try and work out what is being well, the stars form an umbrella for her and surround her. And then that beautiful texture that she has that is in the front, like a mechanism that is so um, mechanical in the, in the front of the hat. Yes. So it's almost reminiscent of a robber hat. Yes. And if you and look at the, 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 the stairway on it. Yes. So it's a stairway to heaven. Crafted, yeah. And then she's surrounded by these wonderful stars. Look at the profusion of textures that she has there. And as, as you see, even the stilts uh, right down, you, they, they, they've finished them well. So Chanel Brizan is our queen. She's a nightclub dancer. And as you can see, uh, very much in the style of cabaret and receiving a lovely round of applause. For from uh, our crowd here at the Queen's Park, Savannah. Thanks to the sponsors. We'll be right back after a few messages. Semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Blue Waters. Life is better with Blue Waters. Oh, I've got this feeling to high-five the sun Dance in the rain and have my scoop of fun I'm on my way for my day with something new and I've got room for you let loose and live a little get close and share a little give in and taste a little you'll fall in love with creamery novelties of life and live a little I get close and share a little give in and taste a little you'll fall in love with creamery novelties enjoy new creamery novelties Live a little. Well, we're waiting the lights to go up on our Queen Crystal, Crystal Thomas. Thomas. Sasaye, and of course, both you and I, Sharon, will know the Sparrow Calypso Sasaye. And of course, the category is fantasy, breakaway beats.
this costume is really rather large, Sharon, and um, I think they managed to put just about everything in there that is um, textured and creative, and that's what they were referring to, uh, the serpent-like yeah. thing that he would have uh, woven. Um, and of course, those, those leaves that they would have painted, uh, the basket work that, again, in the mask and the earrings and everything. A lot uh, of work going in. A lot of work, a lot of work. But the clearly, nice they, they designed so that you have all the various levels. The mask with the textures. And the tassels that surround all of the, again, the large Elizabethan skirt. The idea, though, really should be to cover everything. Um, we're seeing the masquerade in the center of the costume. Um, so a past her boots and everything. A past road mark. Ah, she's oh. got that beautiful movement at the top with the leaves and so on. Very good. I think it's the first for the evening that we've seen reminiscent of what we've been doing before, uh, all, all the various robotics and certain things that we had progressed to. And somehow we haven't seen many of those with the queens. I know that you would see them with the kings. With the but, king, uh, so she's managed to get a lot of movement, which means they did a lot of work in between the uh, prelims and the semis. So Sparrow is in the house. Sparrow with a very <laughs> risque calypso so for those who, who know of the song. So off she goes, Crystal Thomas, Sasaye, and we're off to break. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Samarus, the international carnival supplier since 1949. follow. We're invested in you. Again, uh, Sharon, another Patrick Roberts uh, costume uh, depicting Limbo. Limbo in different forms, a uh, tribute to Julia Edwards as well. And he manages to get a very painterly uh, feel to his costumes at the bottom. You, you see the dense uh, gold and black and the textures that he has created on those wing-like forms. Uh, it's like the center, uh, you know, a, a vortex of, of beauty that you see surrounding this queen and all the butterflies as a part of a headpiece and so on, again in red, black, and white. I think one of the favorite things and themes of Patrick is over the years, butterflies. And again, they are echoed in the wingspans that surround this costume. Most likely that's his daughter because she grew up in the mass as did his son. And you've probably seen his costume yes, in the king's, Robert's so yeah. yeah, this is uh, one of the queens. And as uh, the designer points out to us that uh, the butterfly, the Julia butterfly is not well known. So again, we have, uh, well, she's Dr. Nadine Roberts. She's a 22 foot Julia. 
Julia Butterfly in this particular presentation on stage here at the Queen's Park Savannah. And uh, it's one of the butterflies too that resembles the co what we in Trinidad call the Coca-Cola butterfly. It's the Coca-Cola butterfly, of course, is red and black. Um, but this one has the hints of the gold on it. And of course, he's used the accordion pleated fabric to great advantage there, so she can move additionally her wings. And giving that lovely ripple effect too under these lights. And also a tribute to the late uh, Julia Edwards, making her way off stage. So we have one more queen to come, but we'll be back after this. Semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final, powered by TTT Limited Media Network. Live for local. Oh, I've got this feeling to high-five the sun, dance in the rain, and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way to flavor my day with something new, and I've got room for you. Let loose and live a little, get close and share a little, give in and taste a little. You'll fall in love with creamery novelties of life and live a little, I get close and share a little. Taste a little, you'll fall in love with Creamery Novelties. Join new Creamery Novelties. Live a little. On stage, we have Savitri Holassi with Masquerade the Hidden Beauty as we welcome you back to the Queen's Park Savannah, the semi finals of Senior Queens. This one is yet another large costume in the fantasy category. And the lights go up and the crowds respond. And what a wonderful detailed costume this is. Uh, it's, she, she seems to be coming out of the center of floral elements. Uh, the textures are absolutely beautiful and you see the airbrush work that she has there, that, that they've added sparkles, the masks that as the costumes turn, you see the variety of them that come out of the center of each of those floral depictions. Beautiful uh, long sleeves and of course the, the, the skirt again in um, flounces. Really quite beautiful. Bordered with the gold. And as you add them up, each face is a, a different face as she turns. Well, truly quite a seasoned masquerader as well huh? masquerader yes coming out of uh, entourage productions known for very large costumes very detailed and indeed with those gloves you you get the feeling of those women the the dam the, the well they they're saying that these the dam lorraines of our mass were patterned on these uh, women who were in the masquerade with their long gloves and, and all the And of elegance. course, the, the original Dam Lorraines were played by men who echoed uh, the masters' um, balls and so on that they would have had in uh, that time. And though the French didn't really um, take over Trinidad, 
uh, you know, rain, they in fact left a lot of legacy for us, language, cuisine, the whole nine yards. Well, the uh, queen, whose savagery, Holasi, and the hidden beauty, she's made her way off stage, and Judith Laird, uh, who provided expert color commentary, is about to make her way off the commentary team for this evening. So we thank Judith very much as we've come to the end of the Senior Queens of Carnival. We'll take a break and be right back. It's been my Kings pleasure, Queens Sharon. Semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens Final, powered by White Oak. If you know, you know. Carnival Thursday, 16 February. Everybody's heading to the big, big show. On the big, big stage, Queen's Park Savannah at 7.30 p.m. For the mother of all Kaisoramas. As Tuco presents Kaisorama Reloaded 2023, the final. Finals. Gather your friends and your crew and come to the National X Temple and new, new Freestyle in the Rama Grand Final. Finals. With 16 finalists. Who will be crowned X Temple champion? And who will be crowned the first freestyle in the Rama champion. Come see for yourself. Special guest Nyla Blackman, Master Funny and Brother Ebony. Your MCs Omari and Rockers. Get your tickets now. General 100 Special Reserve 200 at all NCC box offices. Kaiser House box office and all Tuco offices. Carnival Thursday 16 February. Queen's Park Savannah 7.30pm is the Tuco National X Tempo and freestyle in the Rama Grand Final. Finals. Lady Wabin, how are you so hurry? Sorry, brethren, on a mission. Well, look at thing in here. I don't get thing for my baby doll costume already. Samaroos really have everything for carnival. Excuse me, madam, does you have any of these in Dam Lorraine side? No, madam, I does not work here, but Samaroos has his everything for children. Mars, look, eh. Samaroos is really the carnival store. Wait now, I switch off my car? Look, hello. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by B-Mobile, back to Bacchanal. Welcome back to the Senior kings and queens of carnival we just saw the queens and now it's uh, with great pleasure that we welcome the senior kings on stage with me is uh, artist peter shepherd who will be giving us the expert commentary so we're hearing the dramatic music and now we're seeing the first of our kings kyle anthony mattis Ah, indeed, it's it's indeed Raymond Mark. So my apologies, we'll see Kyle Anthony Mattis a bit later on. So Raymond Mark is the feathered serpent creature, Kukul Khan. So last time in the prelims, Peter, this costume made quite an impact. Kukul Khan, the term has become very familiar as we looked at Wakanda forever, and the impact is great with, again, those LED strips. So this costume as well, using the feathers very effectively, wings, 
and the body again of the serpent uh, to the front of the masquerader. So the masquerader is in uh, the body of the costume. And very quick, in and off, this uh, king, senior king. So the feathered uh, serpent creature, Kukul Khan. So we'll be back with our second king right after this break. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Creamery Novelties. Live a little. This Carnival 2023, TSP, Iowa George, and Team Not Sided, bring to you Carnival Come Back. Carnival Monday night is we all meet us at Victoria Avenue. Dress code is your best Monday wear. Featuring Voice, Second Star, Nyla Blackburn, Skinny Fabulous, Trinidad Killer, Your Brother, Tepa, the Caltasia, Problem Child, Natty and Thunder, Allison Hyde. Get those tickets at Aria Smash Tech, Woodford Street, opposite Lucky Dollar, Modern Basic, Trin City Mall, Marco Polo, West Mall, Swanna Clothing, Port of Spain, Booth 81, New City Mall, Trin City Boulevard, Henry Street, Port of Spain, and Pappy's Waterhouse. Sponsored by CTT, NLCB, Forest Park, Punch and Rock, the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, and Karen. It's the way we play. Carnival Monday night is we own Carnival come back at Victoria Avenue. Legacy of the mighty Spartans. So that is the king on stage right now. And he is Ronald Barney Blaze. of drama in this costume we await the lighting to go up and here it is the king Leonidas so again the god of war or the theme of war anyway, very popular with Trinidad and Tobago Carnival over the years. And this masquerader, Ronald, Ronald Barney Blaze, he designs and makes his own costume. I was chatting with him backstage and I was particularly interested in the skills components in the costume, for example, in that black and white figure at the back of the costume uh, that he crafted with paper mache on a wire frame. So first, he sculpted the, the skeleton, let's say, of the figure, and then applied the um, sort of abstract papier-mâché parts to it. And he's been doing this for a long time. And he loves to design and wear his own costume, which is really good for a designer because he understands what the costume can do. Well, again, I think it, it's, it's, again, a beautiful costume with so many elements in it and so much of a story. So someone looking on, a young person perhaps, might be tempted to check out what is the Sparta and what is Greece, B.C., and what kind of war did they fight with the Persians? And in, ter in terms of the judges' table and part of their criteria uh, for the historical um, category, there will be points awarded for the authentic authenticity of the story. Again, another king who has um, made a quick exit. So we'll be back with more after a word from our sponsors. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Nescafe. It all starts with the Nescafe. Oh, I've got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain. 
and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way to flavor my day with something new, and I've got room for you. Let loose and live a little, get close and share a little. Join new Creamery Novelties. Live a little. Beautiful costuming on stage, as indeed all these costumes are. This is Franklin Jagdeo with Celebration of Our People. And it is the portrayal, explosion of our diverse cultures. The band is celebration of our people. And in the designing of this costume, he found a, a fabric uh, that looks like a tie-dye fabric that is very colorful. And that represents the melting pot of ethnicities that we are as Trinbegonians. And that is why, that's why he chose that material in the appliques on those wings. And the wings triangular in shape. Uh, he said, I asked him why those geometric shapes, and he said that um, it represents the sails of the boats that they arrived to this land on. All right, and the bell bottoms again, evoking memories of Sailor Mars. So I guess the sails and sailing and Sailor Mars, all of a piece here. Also, the masquerade as well as the designer, the same person, Franklin. Uh, he also designed, his team also designed the um, Miss Trinidad and Tobago costume, national costume for the Miss recently held Miss Universe show in New Orleans. Well, as I say, there has to be a special connection when you've designed your own costume. And I can see embellishments on this from the prelims. Uh, there's more been, more has been added on, more decoration. More gems, more, ext more, more foil, extensions. More extensions. Filled in the costume a lot more. As you'd expect, because uh, now, as you re reminded us last time, the judges are looking for particular things. So presentation, the impact, of course, of adding more would probably equate to more points. And then all of those vertical elements in the sense of the costume is the, is the explosion that he speaks about, the explosion of our diverse culture. So it's the whole, everything just out there, which is exactly what our carnival is. It's, a, it's, it's everything, you know, all packaged into one euphoric uh, expression. Well, he started to basically walk. If this must be a, a relatively heavy costume. I would expect so. So we, we love the, the explosion of color as the explosion of our diverse cultures as portrayed by Franklin Jagdale makes his way off the Queen's Park Savannah stage. And we have a few messages for you and we'll be back. Queen's semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queen's final powered by Stamina Energy rise to the occasion. Back in the Bacchanal Be mobile we tell Whoa. Finally now I can get a chance To link up with my friends and go on With be mobile again The stage again Ronald, the Rhythm King, is now parading before the judges and the audience here at the Queen's Park Savannah, and he is Ronald Taylor. So the first thing, Peter, that will strike is that 
drum, the drum at the, the drummer at the top of the costume, and of course the drum. And I like his interaction with the costume in that way that he's beating his own drum. You know, we say beat your drum and dance for yourself. And then again, I like the use of uh, fabric as appliques in the design elements of the costume. You see it's very popular in all costumes. Um, a lot of reflective papers that are crumpled and used. In this case, it's used to fringe your wings. And as the fabric blows in the breeze, the lights pick it up and give it a nice dazzling effect. And the breeze has picked up at the savannah tonight. Again, yes. yes. We had a little lull where you saw that it did affect some of the uh, portrayals. So fortunately, it was milder when the juniors were on stage. And for the most part, they all carried their entire costumes. So now the wind has picked up and the, the big guys <laughs> yeah, have well, to battle the, strength the wind. That, yes, the strength that is needed. So he too is showing that he can beat his drum. He is, after all, Ronald, the rhythm king. And he's able to spin the costume well. And I was just going to say, you see a lot of the design features in these costumes are uh, usually these circular sort of, for lack of a better description, these skirts that cover the triangular chassis that are underneath them. And this is a continuous trend throughout all costume, well, most of the costume designs. And, and then you stick vertical components in it for wings or spikes. Yes, or to give you the height. So we'll take a break and be right back. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by White Oak. If you know, you know. Where the heart goes, the soul is bound to follow. We're invested in you. A dramatic presentation on stage. Let's enjoy Ted Eustace. El Conquistador. And there you can see that he has pressed some buttons and his costume is, is in motion. The serpents atop the costume are rising into the night sky here at the grandstand of the Queen's Park Savannah. costumes are such incredible uh, works of art. They are uh, moving state sets, for lack of a better description. They, they uh, can stand alone in any space and be uh, something monumental. And even using them as uh, public art in, in uh, the corporate world beyond carnival is something that can be happening with, with costumes such as this. lobby of a big office building. And I think a lot of designers and band leaders now, or those, because often uh, people spend many, many dollars 
to do these things and they're keeping in mind now that it's not like in the old days where you just break it up and put it in a storeroom in the back by the garage. Now, they're, they're show, as you say, works of art. So with this costume, uh, there's so many different mechanical components and I'm sure we are not seeing the end of what the costume can do. Oh, what, what designers tend to do is to give you a little more tonight. And then by the finals night, they really add all the magic. All the, all the magic. Well, but it's El Conquistador, so you notice the skulls that we, we see. On and then the scale of the costume on the stage in comparison to the, to the you know, you're looking up at it from the audience. So it really has an intimidating and commanding presence on the Savannah stage. And Let's there he goes. The serpents. So it, it's again another quick exit for Ted Eustace as we continue with our senior kings of carnival here on TTT, the home of carnival. We'll be right back. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by B Mobile. Back to Bacchanal. Lady Wam, how are you so hurry? Sorry, brethren, on a mission. Well, look at thing in here. I done got thing for my baby doll costume already. Samaru's really have everything for carnival. Excuse me, madam, does you have any of these in damn Lorraine side? No, madam, I does not work here, but Samaru's has his everything for children. Mars, look, eh. Samaru's is really the carnival store. Wait up, I switch off my car? Look, hello. The winning numbers in the National Lottery Online Lotto Plus draws for Wednesday, 15th February 2023 are 24, 21, 27, 29, and 22. In any order, the Powerball number is 3 and the multiplier number is 4. Well, now we have a tribute to the steel pan. The portrayal is entitled, Let's Celebrate the Pan, and Aaron Sukdale is the king. Well, after the massive um, El Conquistador, here we, we see the scale. So here one is, he's able to maneuver it much more easily, and that's obvious. And the beauty of the costume, again, this is uh, one of a number of costumes that have been celebrating the pan, which is, of course, great because Pan Trimbago is celebrating Diamond Anniversary this year. And thusly, the designer has used uh, close to the national colors, uh, I guess using silver in place of white for added effect. But it is, um, it is a, a tremendous tribute to the national instrument, uh, especially with the national colors. And then, we look at the design of it again, and I, I keep speaking about the circular skirt. But here they have, they have, you know, it's not as solid a skirt, it just has panels sticking out in that circular motion, which gives the whole costume a lot more movement. Everything is independently moving. Each pan at the end is independently moving, like, like it would on a rack of steel pans coming into the Savannah for Panorama Finals. Indeed, and the silver, as you say, it's very noticeable, silver lamé, even in the triangular skirt. But I would say even the use of tinsel around the, around the pans, they use the tinsel to decorate the pan racks. Yes, uh, and with some with the canopies, yes, indeed they do. So the um, Aaron Sukdeo, let's celebrate the pan, leaving the Savannah stage, and we're leaving you for a short while as we take a break. Junior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Nescafe. It all starts with the Nescafe. Carnival Monday night. Monday night. February 20th will be brass, 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 and more brass as the National Carnival Commission presents Brass Bacchanal. Brass. 
Las Bacchanal, our third edition at Festival City, Queens Park, Savannah. Starting 8.30 p.m., 10 bands Band. will do battle for the first prize of $100,000. Brass Bacchanal is a cooler event, so bring your coolers and your crew. No oversized coolers, no glass bottles allowed. Come and remember the days when brass bands ruled. Tickets are only $125, so get yours now. Tickets available at Cache's and Java Nation stores nationwide. The NCC head office, Queens Park Savannah, and online at islandetickets.com. For more information, call 480-5100. Who will win the first prize of $100,000? Brass Bacchanal will take you back to the good old days. If you're a brass fan, don't miss this one. Brass Bacchanal. And we have Earl Beckles, who is Zelt from the Ice Dragon, and made quite an impact during the preliminaries and doing the same here this evening. He made an impact on me. I remember saying that this is the kind of costume that I would love to play in. And uh, I maintain that sentiment tonight. A uh, very mobile costume on the Masquerader. And uh, what are the embellishments that I've seen added to the costume is a lot of uh, metallic papers to the black and white. Uh, since the prelim appearance. Uh, maybe the wings are fuller. So there's a really nice design feature on those wings that I like. Uh, it's a nice body, nice fullness, uh, and resulting in a great movement. And of course, black and white uh, is very dramatic always on stage. Well, I'm seeing that the Ice Dragon's head seems to be, um, well, maybe he's a bit despondent. Side eye, side eye. Okay. <laughs> so there we have uh, the uh, costume, a costume that uh, in its simplicity, the black and white, but again very effective. And then adding that iridescent coloring, I think allows the lights to really pick it up. Allows the, yeah. the lights. So that's Earl Beckles. We have 20 uh, senior kings to parade before our judges uh, this evening, and uh, just like with the queens. They seem to be moving along at quite a clip. Yeah, the show is going great tonight in terms of its, its continuity. Uh, we saw first the junior kings and queens, and then the senior uh, queens, and now we're about halfway through the kings. Almost. And a presentation on stage, again, that will bring the drama. as portrayed by Fareed Cavallo. And Fareed loves to get into character with his costumes fully and always adds a lot of drama in the presentation. So here you can also note that there's a lot of embellishment that has occurred in the, in the costume. It's a lot more decoration of just picking up the stage lights. Uh, there's a lot more finesse that I remember on the, um, on the prelims night. And look at his expression there, he's really enjoying the, the presentation. Free is designed, he is designed for the stage, whether it's here in the Carnival Arena or just on a theatrical stage doing some kind of presentation. So this comes uh, very, very natural to him in presenting costumes. And then the sort of memories of uh, Saga Boy type thing. Feel of puppetry. The masters continue to inspire uh, the young designers. Of course, of course, and that's all to the good. So the the blue with those. Oh, look at that shade of green. I love that. I love that uh, that green in it. It sort of throws it off a little bit. And a little red on the side of the head of the uh, of the puppet. 
So I guess it shows the designer knows what he's doing as Fareed Cavallo makes his way off stage. We'll take a couple messages and then be back. The Senior Kings and Queens semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Samarus, the international carnival supplier since 1949. Carnival Monday night. Monday night! February 20th will be Brass, 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 Brass and more Brass as the National Carnival Commission presents Brass, Brass Bacchanal. Brass Bacchanal! Our third edition at Festival City, Queen's Park, Savannah. Starting 8.30 p.m. Ten bands Brass. will do battle for the first prize of $100,000. Brass Bacchanal is a cooler event, so bring your coolers and your crew. No oversized coolers, no glass bottles allowed. Come and remember the day when brass bands rule. Tickets are only $125, so get yours now. Tickets available at Caches and Java Nation stores nationwide. The NCC head office, Queens Park Savannah, and online at islandetickets.com. For more information, call 480-5100. Who will win the first prize of $100,000? Brass Backer now will take you back to the good old days. If you're a brass fan, don't miss this one. Brass Backer now. Next up will be Hayarima, who speak the bird language. And this again, uh, for the song of the Cacique, where there's a, a dramatic poem being read as our masquerader moves on the stage. So perhaps we can take in a little bit of the poem and then again talk a little bit about the design elements in this particular costume, which is being portrayed by Nigel Batiste. Hayarima. Sanctuary. Hayarima speaks the bird language. Number 12. Well, there seems to be a slight delay. Nigel Batiste. But we do have the dramatic music, the whistling of birds. Hayarima, so indeed, we will be hearing about the bird, the bird language, language as uh, this king crosses the stage. And we're, we the are now pretty much halfway through the king's presentation. Four Cayman take Hayarima to look at what is left of the swamp. The owl shows him the way to go. Shadow of the Macau upon the water. Hayarima speaks bird language, and the ibis stirs the sky broad red. Pale egrets picking their way through the mud. The ghost of Kasik hums in the mangrove. The monkey waits his turn. Together, they tell us this island is all we have. We who live here must guard against the urge to be gone, to disappear when there's beauty, the song of Kasik still to be found. Oh, Hayarima, we hear the Igona still singing his green song. Well, as he ended there talking about the Igwanas, I think there's been some embellishment of our Igwanas from the prelims at the front of the costume. They're again, dressed up tonight. They're dressed up. They look as if they've got a little extra LED help with their eyes. This is one of those costumes where the prelims, I was speaking about the placement of the elements in the, in the overall design of the costume. And this is one that, um, for me, is very much of a, of, a, of a stage set. I keep talking about the stage set thing. But the placement of all these birds and the reptiles and so on within the ecosystem that they have created um, in, in the presentation. Um, very effective. I mean, the Scarlet Ibis in flight, I think, a uh, great um, effect, um, as simple as it, as it is constructed, but it really looks great. Uh, the egrets are there. I see these uh, little fellas in the front here. <laughs> the Cayman ahead of his boat. Even the way the water is splashing yeah. up on the bow of the boat is very artistically um, done. And, and receiving then the blue a warm and yellow. round of applause too from our crowd here. 
And he has a beautiful blue and uh, green and blue macaw uh, over the top of the costume. Coming up to it now, blue and yellow macaw. And then the sails, that's an unusual shape and it's an unusual construction and design for a king costume. Um, but I think it works in his favor for this particular presentation. It's a great environmental uh, costume. And I think the craftsmanship of, of that big one in the back uh, is very well, I like them. I like Iguana. You like it well, <laughs> so do I. I also, I particularly like the fact, though, that the message is that this is the only planet we have, and as we talk about Trinidad and Tobago, it's the only land we have, and we have to listen to the song of nature and preserve it. And we are so rich in these natural resources, in the, in the river, in the Karani swamp, in the, all the wetlands that we have, that this abundant life exists in. But as you say, I mean, it looks like a set, so yes. you, a mobile set, theatrical set, because the arching on the sides, which may actually, well, the wind he's, he's using, he, he's able to, to manipulate the costume. And there we have the monkey. Another very large costume crossing the sea. Here we have the snowy white egret, our national bird, Scarlet Ibis. So there he goes, and uh, he is Nigel Batiste Hayarima, who speaks bird language, making his way off stage as we take a moment to thank our sponsors. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Stamina Energy. Rise to the occasion. Fantastic Friday has moved to Skinner Park San Fernando. The Chutney Soka Monarch finals will now be held Fantastic Friday, February 17th. Don't miss our special segment, Legends and Icons, with a special tribute to Anil Beam. Featuring performances by Nival Chaitla, Ravi B and Karma, Satnarayan Ragu, Udram Holas, Rasika Dindia, Ruplal G, Drupati, and Terry Gadraj from Guyana. 13 finalists will vie for the Chutney Soka Monarch and the Queen of Chutney Soka. Absolutely free to the public. This international star-studded event is a gift to the nation. Powered by the Government of Trinidad and Tobago, the National Carnival Commission, B-Mobile, TTT, Visit Trinidad, Angostura White Oak, and Southex. And now, once again, there'll be another dramatic presentation as we have Waterfall Oracle. Joel Lewis is our king, and it's from the band Moko Somoko. So we know that there's going to be uh, quite a presentation. So let's take in a little bit of that on stage. This masquerade of soul channels the genius of creation in veils of greenness, light, blues, and roses. Veils that weave themselves into chains within all generations, all peoples, in the mystery of the waterfall. Definitely the wind here adding to the drama of the costume. On stage. The waterfall, the effects of water. Joel Lewis. Yes, and all of their in all of their costumes, they really use uh, or create interesting textiles uh, for the mokos, which are always very effective. I mean, look at the height that they are. Uh, he's at. He's at exactly compared to the washerwoman and dancers below. The ballad. And 
and of course the headpiece adding to height, so you, you know that that's the central figure, even though there are other Mofo Jombies on stage with him. So it, it actually looks like a, like it's a back like a back piece that uh, that structure is uh, mounted on, and perhaps it's like a water wheel. Like the water wheels, perhaps. That might I mean, that's a that's a. I mean, look at how he's dancing, and then to be able to balance that weight on his shoulders. Why at that height? <laughs> at that height. So he's a spirit, part waterfall, part angel, wings of iridescent water, with halos of spinning light above his head. So he's a, an oracle. He's not just an oracle, he's a waterfall oracle. Joel Lewis. Beautifully played uh, portrayal of this costume. I mean, you're that high, and there's this amount of wind on the and savannah stage. Amount. But the confidence that the stilt walkers or Moko Jambi. Oh, it's like have. they're walking on flat ground. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the wind will probably blow me over just, you know, flat foot on the ground. Okay, let's take a break here at the Senior Kings of Carnival at the Queen's Park Savannah. We'll be back with more. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by B-Mobile. Back to Bacchanal. Let's go! Huh. Back in the Bacchanal. Back in the Bacchanal. Back in the Bacchanal. Be mobile, we tell you. Well, finally, now I can get a chance to link up with my friends and go on with Be mobile again. The stage again. The stage again. Final powered by Creamery Novelties. Live a little. It's a lot of drama and excitement tonight, and this is Kyle Anthony Matas, Creatio Ex Nihilo, the external source of light divine. Let's take in some of this wonderful presentation. sun to rule the day. And the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Good. in full splendor. And we're told that the technological is being mixed with the supernatural, the tangible with the intangible, and it's bridging the past with the present, Peter. 
And this is the kind of innovation that I like in the competition, where they're taking design uh, a step forward, uh, using Kinetics uh, Windless Costume. It's an entire team, it's not just one designer. I mean, it's a lot of technical people involved in the creation of this. Uh, for example, uh, Kinetics is done by uh, the famous Anthony Howe uh, in New York, who helped with the kinetics in the in the costume. Lighting is done by Jim Freeman. Um, the costume is like is, is has neo pixels in it, and there's an aerospace technician Keith Critchlow that also assisted on the design team. And the, the cost of a costume like this, with the technology that's involved and the materials that they use in the costume, is the equivalent of a of a sedan motor car that you are buying. Uh, they estimate that it's probably about $200,000, $250,000 for this costume. I can well believe it. The materials, I mean, it's, it's, it's lots of little electrical components that uh, the entire thing is wired and uh, computerized. And the framework is made out of um, carbon fiber as opposed to just aluminum or wire or the traditional materials used. It's, and carbon fiber, carbon is very expensive. Well, it's creating the impact, so and he, he's on stilts also. He's on, he's on stilts, he's manipulating his controls, so I'm told that on the one hand, the, the controls do one thing, and then he can, with the other hand, do something else, and then still use a part of his brain to walk on stilts and carry this costume that, you know, it's, it's not a light thing. You're on stilts, and then you have all of these moving parts. creating quite an impact here at the Queen's Park Savannah. Kyle Anthony Matters, Creatio Ex Nihilo, the external source of light divine. And we'll be right back with more Senior Kings of Carnival. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Nescafe. It all starts with the Nescafe. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Blue Waters. Life is better with Blue Waters. On stage is Marlon Rampersad and he is Hades, King of the Underworld. King Hades. The God of Death. Another wide and high costume, but one that uh, the masquerader is carrying. Uh, and so here in the design has a lot of the popular features that one would put in designing a, a costume of the scale. Uh, first of all, the big circular uh, shape of the costume uh, so that all sides of the audience can appreciate the design and then the use of the reflective papers which is a lightweight and very very effective under the stage lights. Balance is also very key as he's carrying the entire costume on his on his uh, torso and it is balanced by that uh, creature that extends to the front and to the back of the center of the costume. That really gives them a good, uh, a good balance. They see the tail extending out in the back. Again, a lot of detail. Those masks, and uh, the masquerader is wearing a beautifully done mask. 
He is indeed king of the underworld. And all and, and the construction of the costume lends itself to having great movements as and I really love that the that he's chosen to carry a costume. I, I, I really am a stickler for for that if you can. Yes. I mean some of the bigger well, ones it's unavoidable yeah. but and the, the use of the spiraling for the creature that uh, comes yeah, out I like of the, the front. Again, that, that the movement. And as you say, it's fiberglass, it's aluminium tubing, it's net, it's wire, so the masquerade is able to carry the costume. And the wind is not a factor for this masquerader. No, exactly. He's really enjoying it. He's really enjoying his portrayal. Um, the costume is very effective going across the stage. I'm sure it will do well in the final analysis. Yes, and, and as you say, it's elements of that serpent, that snake in front there, but again, creating movement, a lot of movement as opposed to a solid body and, and of course the tail at the back. So as he leaves, we're getting the full impact of Hades, King of the Underworld, and Marlon Rampersad as we take a break from the Queen's Park Savannah. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Samarus, the international carnival supplier since 1949. Lady Wabin, how are you so hurry? Sorry, brethren, on a mission. Well, look at thing in here. I don't get thing for my baby doll costume already. Samaru's really have everything for carnival. Excuse me, madam, does you have any of these in Dame Lorraine's side? No, madam, I does not work here, but Samaru's has his everything for children. Mars, look, eh. Samaru's is really the carnival store. Wait now, I switch off my car? Look, hello. Back in the back on now. Let's go. Back in the back on now. Back in the back on now. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Stamina Energy. Rise to the occasion. On stage we have Christopher Saldina who is portraying Fire Rama. And again we see the well, Sailor Mask uh, motif there. But the steel pan is very much um, involved in this costuming as uh, we were saying during the prelims and I like the application of the of the steel pan motifs in the in the wings without it being the obvious you know the decoration of the steel band so you still can recognize uh, the musical notes and the shape of the pan and the and the wings uh, without it being you know and then <laughs> I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but the use of the tinsel, which is what the steel pans use to decorate their pan racks. Well, the band's presentation this year, from which uh, Christopher is, is um, from, oh look, he's got a red umbrella too, is called Limbo. And according to uh, Christopher Saldina and his uh, designer, the steel pan is in limbo in carnival. So I suppose they're trying to say that, you know, we don't have as many steel bands on the road for carnival as in the past. Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's certainly an absence of, uh, well, not an absence, but a reduction in the steel pans that come out on the road for carnival, for carnival itself days. with, with uh, portrayals. Uh, some do. Indeed, of course. All Stars is, is known, Starlift is known for coming out. And that's an entirely different uh, mass playing experience. And I can't say that I wouldn't want to do that one yet. I think that's, that's to be added to the bucket list. There's something to do. Add it to the bucket list. So Fancy sailors and, and that. 
and uh, kinetic robots. That's too much coordination for me. So he's able to play his mask and he's using the umbrella instead of the, uh, the stick that sometimes you see um, the smokers right. and the various sailors use. And so part of his portrayal is keeping the tradition by including his dance. And that, that, that is an important uh, part of this, of this category, doing the sailor dance. Really red and silver, but effectively. Yeah, I mean they've, they've treated the fabric well with the fiberglass rods and so on to get that nice fabric sculpture in the costume. And we have a few messages for you, and then we'll be back with more Senior Kings of Carnival. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final, powered by B Mobile, back to back now. Oh, I've got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain, and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way to flavor my day with something new, and I've got room for you. Let loose and live a little, get close and share a little. And share a little Give in and taste a little You'll fall in love with Creamery Novelties Enjoy new Creamery Novelties Live a little Lady Wabin How you so hurry? Sorry brethren, on a mission Well, look at thing in here I done got thing for my baby doll costume already. Samaroos really have everything for carnival. Excuse me, madam, does you have any of these in Dam Lorraine side? No, madam, I does not work here, but Samaroos has his everything for children. Mars, look, eh. Samaroos is really the carnival store. Wait now, I switch off my car? Look, hello. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final, powered by Creamery Novelties. Live a little. And we have on stage Lester Wells, and this king is portraying the procession, culture on the move. So we are meant to see not just uh, the, the drums, the African drums or the tambour bamboo, but also the East Indian influence, where they'll be pulsating tassa drumming being represented on this costume. I also like the, um, the representation of the transition of where the music came from. Uh, right there in the forefront that he's holding a, a length of bamboo. So the tambu bamboo uh, from which the pan is derived. Um, and then all of the other musical elements. Yes, as he turns, you can see the uh, panists at the back there. So again, a lot of uh, molding of figures here. Yeah, and there he's used uh, satins and stuff to, uh, to outline his figures or, or determine his figures. Um, there are some, there's a double tan of pan. Yes, you see someone playing the biscuit tin. And there are the different uh, musical elements from the different ethnicities of Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, well, predominantly African and Indian, East Indian. And the crick tin. And the biscuit tin, yes, <laughs> the biscuit tin. How could we forget? So it's meant to show, as you say, the evolution of the musical growth of Trinidad and Tobago. So uh, in the days when you'd have people coming out of the hell yards, and now you'll have performances from steel bands in, in Carnegie Hall and all the prestigious music halls all over the world. So in terms of the composition and the design, I mean, he, he's placed all of his figures very strategically uh, to, to balance the composition of the costume, right? It's not like lopsided, you know, more figures than one side. It's a really nice balance of everything, of all the different components. I mean, and these guys, <laughs> look at the hairdo. 
Yeah, so he's managing to get, and I'm, I'm busy looking at, is that a dog? A dog on one side of the costume. There may be a dog, I saw a chicken yes, look, somewhere. Look, look, look the dog. Unless it's, it's some other animal. Maybe goat? In the front there. So we're getting many elements here and messages as we do every year as our kings of carnival cross the stage. And it's a fascinating experience. We hope you're enjoying it on TTT, the home of carnival, as we go through to 20 senior kings of carnival parading before the judges and hopeful to be chosen to cross the stage on Dimash Grand Night, which is Carnival Sunday. So it's been a, a progression of all sorts of shapes, sizes, heights. It has been a great night uh, of, of costume presentations from both the juniors and seniors. And I was talking to some of the younger uh, masqueraders tonight. And one of the things is it's such a, an opportunity to be in the same arena with your mentors, the senior mass men of, of, of bygone years that are here still parading, that these young people look up to, and they too will one day be in the senior competi competition. Well, we continue now with our kings on stage, and that has been the case with quite a few. We have um, mascots, I guess you might call some of them, coming on stage. forevermore. Awake, O sleeper, see in the darkness, and you will be one with nature. Awake. And again, the use of the lighting. So now it's up, and this is one that fascinated us last time. Narusaruman. This should be Bentham. Keston Bentham. So Keston tells me that he designs and makes his own costume every year, uh, which is one of those things that I speak about that you really understand what your costume can do, how it feels, when it feels wrong, how you can resolve those design problems yourself. Uh, how you can compensate for different things. But apart from, apart from carrying this costume on his back, he too is walking on three-foot stilts, uh, which, which in itself are very thick in their circumference, so it's, he's walk, he has to walk wide wearing stilts and, and present this costume. Well, we've had some wonderful lighting there provided for Keston Denton. Um, and he has shown very much, again, uh, that um, ability to walk on stills, to control uh, so much. And, and there were, again, so many elements because you're seeing the, the foam bits hanging and you're all like little noodles. And also at the same time, you have the lighting, all creating such, such an impact for us. And it's a tree, you know, you, it's supposed to represent the tree of hope and light and love and all those things apart, you know, and, and coming off the earth and the green and, and that sort of and thing. And on close inspection of that tree, that, that figure, it was so beautifully and artfully crafted. The, cost, the entire costume is beautifully crafted, which he does himself. Which he does himself. So even, uh, would judges take that into account or would they even know? Well, at prelims, they were doing skills, so they're backstage and they're scrutinizing the, oh. how the costumes are made. So, yes, at some point, it, it does factor into the tally of the points. Well, we had uh, Keston creating a bit of a stir here as uh, he portrayed Narusa Ruman, uh, representing uh, our connection, man, woman's connection to our environment. And uh, hopefully, again, those messages, that, that's been a popular theme this year. Well, it should be. It should be, but it's not always um, well represented because the climate crisis didn't start yesterday. But nevertheless, we're so delighted to see that so many people, not just dealing with the environment and the problems and the need to protect the environment, but also we have uh, the, the, the portrayals that talked about how sustainable their costumes are, the importance of upcycling and 
recycling, so all that. So for those who are looking at home and enjoying uh, just the colors and the dancing, well, that's fine too. But again, the message is being uh, trumpeted loud and clear by both our queens and kings of Carnival here tonight at Carnival City at the Queen's Park Savannah. So we have up next, we have um, Russell Grant. Russell Grant is going to uh, again be one of those uh, costumes on stilts. And this is the Resurrection Mule. Again, towering, a towering figure on stilts. And the thing is, Peter, that even though there's the sort of signature look of Moko Somoko's um, um, characters, you, you don't feel that there's a sameness. No. I mean, there's something that, there's something that you can recognize in, the, in their designs. And for me, the I mean, the really the treatment of the of the textiles was really spectacular. Very, very effective. Once again, we look at the headpiece. Um, last time we talked a bit about that, um, a shadow tray horse. So again, the shadow animal spirit there. And do you notice something about this horse? Well, he's got red eyes. Calm down in the costume and you'd see that the hooves. Ah, yes, indeed. So again, detail, even to the stilts. To the ends of the stilts. I hadn't got down there yet. <laughs> Still looking at, um, the, well, again, because of the last time we, we, we were told that what we thought might have been water wheels is actually spinning light. And the mascots with him are spinning light. those circles. So we have spinning light there. And here we have the resurrection mule, a phantom dappled with gleaming light, bringing redemption from death through the genius of love. Did you think a dray horse would do all that? I'm really enraptured by this performance. Um, it, it has my attention at the moment. It, 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 you're walking on these, he's so high up. You have no idea how high up. He's so, you can kind of get a gauge of it compared to the two other mascots. Plus carry that in your back. Plus manipulate yards upon yards of this, of this well, it's probably very light fabric, but I, I love the fabric. I love how the placement of everything is in the fabric that captures the light. Yes, well, my apologies to all horses. The skeletal head was that of a mule. Uh-huh. Hooves, hooves still apply, right? Hooves still apply. And we'll take a short break and return to the Senior Kings of The Carnival. Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Nescafe. It all starts with the Nescafe. Carnival Monday night. Monday night. February 20th will be brass, 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 and more brass as the National Carnival Commission presents Brass, brass Bacchanal. Brass Bacchanal. Our third edition at Festival City, Queen's Park, Savannah. Starting 8.30 p.m. Ten bands brass, brass. will do battle for the first prize of $100,000. Brass Bacchanal is a cooler event, so bring your coolers and your crew. No oversized coolers, no glass bottles allowed. Come and remember the day when brass bands rule. Tickets are only $125, so get yours now. Tickets available at Caches and Java Nation stores nationwide. The NCC head office, Queens Park Savannah, and online at islandetickets.com. For more information, call 480-5100. Who will win the first prize of $100,000? Brass Bacchanal will take you back to the good old days. If you're a brass fan, don't miss this one. Brass Bacchanal. 
the Senior Kings and Queens semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Blue Waters. Life is better with Blue Waters. So the lights are down to allow for more drama on stage and we're going to be seeing the extraterrestrials because believe it or not, they are here. And here he is. Well, that's a, that's a change because remember at the prelims. prelims, the spacecraft was on the floor. He was not wearing the spacecraft. So they have managed to construct the whole thing and yes. get he them going. He is Tekel Sylvan. And he, as we remember, is quite a character. So you'll see him enjoying himself on his stilts and reminding us that uh, there are things that we don't understand and the Roswell Files, long a subject of conspiracy, is indeed here to tell us that our extraterrestrials are here. One of the skills of these stilt walkers is their ability to animate themselves with their body language, with their, with their limbs and by extension the the whole full length of the of the vocal of the skills. And that's where their personalities come in. So I mean these guys. Yeah, we, we looked at the hooves of uh, the resurrection mool and there you see some uh, strange toes, some green toes at the base of yeah. the stilt. And the same time you have interest with the uh, strip lighting of the spacecraft. And he's using his, he's gesturing to the audience, you know, like, you know, give me some applause. Yes, <laughs> give I'm, me some love. I'm doing something great here. I'm carrying my baby E.T. on my head. Okay, we have a short break as Steckle Sylvan, believe it or not, they are here, makes his way off stage. So after these messages, we'll return with more. The Senior Kings and Queens semi-finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Samarus, the international carnival supplier since 1949. Oh, I've got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way to flavor my day with something new and I've got room for you. Let loose and live a little, get close and share a little, give in and taste a little, you'll fall in love with creamery novelties. Love life and live a little, I get close and share a little, give in and taste a little, you'll fall in love with creamery novelties. Join you, Creamery Novelties. Live a little. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Stamina Energy. Rise to the occasion. And once again, the lights are down as the masquerader, our King Ravi Lakhan, shows his portrayal of tribute gestures of a tainted past. Colors ...and mesmerizing antics. Antics that dance to the beat of the mimicry, revolt and evolution of the once enslaved people of our land. Beware of these jolly-faced keepers of our history who hauntedly reincarnate through the expression of the past trials and tribulations we succeeded. The tribute, gestures of a tainted past, will encapsulate all that lay their eyes on them and all that hear their twinkling bells. Masquerader Ravi Lakan uses this portrayal of a jester to put in all the psychedelic trance as we are reminded of the acts of the French aristocracy and its impact on our nation. 
beautifully costumed this Ravi this evening. And when the lights come up on the on the stage, it's the, the color and distribution in this costume, just, the thing just comes alive. It is so vibrant. Tribute, gestures of a tainted past. And the tainted past they're talking about, it's the royal courts of the French aristocracy. And of course, we always talk about the influence of the French on our carnival. So here we have Ravi picking out the jesters of the court. And according to the band, they feed on human consciousness and kaleidoscopic minds. Well, we've certainly got a kaleidoscope of color here. We got that, and uh, I really, I really love the uh, the color distribution. I mean, it's multicolored, but then the, the concentrations of colors, the costume turn, and, and even as the costume turn, it's equal beauty set on every side of the costume, as opposed to just the front and the back. This is a costume in a round. Each. All right, well, Ravi's making his way off stage quickly with his tribute, Jesters of a Tainted Past, and we'll take a quick break. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final, powered by Bay Mobile, back to Bacchanal. Oh, I've got this feeling to high five the sun, dance in the rain, and have my scoop of fun. I'm on my way for my day with something new and I've got room for you let loose and live a little get close and share a little give in and taste a little you'll fall in love with creamery novelties love life and live a little I get close and share a little give in and taste a little you'll fall in love with creamery novelties enjoy new creamery novelties Live a little. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Creamery Novelties. Live a little. And we're almost to the end. We have about two more kings to cross the stage here at the Queen's Park Savannah. It is Carnival City and it is fully alive. This is Carnival Week and we're delighted on TTT, the home of Carnival, to be able to bring you all the splendor, the excitement, the dynamism of our costuming. Creative, brilliant as always and it's semi-finals night for the seniors so that means that embellishments have come into play, Peter, and uh, this is your time. You don't get another a chance for that. No, by now you have Felt your costume, fixed the made the corrections to it, and you're ready to go all out in the finals. It should be Udeveli Olufulaza, the water jab of Kangule mesmerizing you on stage. What she said. Joseph Lewis. And there we have the, all those jab jab antics from our king. Yeah, he's in full blue devil mode with uh, you know with the, the screams that they do in their in their performance when they're in character. And it's really like they get into this into this trance, trance. when they're when they're preparing to become a blue devil. It's a lot of ritual. It's a lot of ritual. I love the construction of the of the figure up there. Well, great molding, plastic molding. So he's haunted and perhaps he'll be haunting your dreams as well because he's done it so well. and the appropriate music to suit. So Blue Devil, all long a part of our carnival and a resurgence of Blue Devils. Nowadays, most events, um, especially carnival related, you'll find that uh, Blue Devils will be part of it. 
So you see, for me, I, I think that what he is doing there, how he is, how he, the mask reader, is presenting this costume, makes me like it even more. Because he is really making the authentic statement that I am a blue devil. I am. I am everything that this costume is. Yes, the only thing missing is, of course, fire breathing. But that would be a bit much to ask. Finals, finals. <laughs> yeah, so, ah, you hear the, 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 the scream. Yeah. It's like a madness, you know. It's, it's and the chains. So, again, born from tears of slavery, the red eyes, the red tongue. You can really see Joseph Lewis looking to, 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 to scream out his rage. So we'll take a quick break before our next king. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Nescafe. It all starts with the Nescafe. Hey, brass back and all. Hey, brass back and all. Hey, brass back and all. Look, I'm going big people fat. Me girl call an axe if I leave home. Yes, I tell she are real close. In brass back and all. Carnival Monday. Yeah, the thing will be real nice, yes. The thing it a real vibe, says. Can't find me ticket, yes. I don't buy the door. Realize I have to pay more. I have to get in. Because this friend not missing me. It's not missing me. I'm going to bring. Monday night in the Savannah is brass back and I'll come and support your best band. Come with your cooler, from and I'll be say so. Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Blue Waters. Life is better with Blue Waters. And this is our final King of Carnival on stage. Glenn D'Souza, Tarolicus, the Winged Wolf. He's on still. added some uh, embellishment to his costume, the, the tinsel I think is an addition. 
from the prelims. And as we mentioned last time, unlike other wolves who run in the pack, he is a solo wolf. Lovely molding, lovely of head. Unlike other dogs that run in the pack, he looks like one of ours. Well, that was a very quick entrance and exit of Glenn de Souza, the final senior king of carnival here in the semi-finals, and his portrayal of Tarolicus, the winged wolf. So we've had 20 kings, senior kings of carnival. Of course, earlier on, we had the juniors for their finals. It's been a pleasure working with you, Peter, Peter Shepherd our expert uh, commentator, but we will be giving you the results for the junior queens and kings of Carnival, so we will be doing that right after a quick break. The Senior Kings and Queens semifinals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Samarus, the international Carnival supplier since 1949. Hey, Brass Hey, Brass If I leave home, yes, I tell she are real close in Brass Bacchanal. Eh. Carnival Monday, yeah, the thing will be real nice, yes, the thing it a real vibe, yes, can find me ticket, yes. I don't buy the door, realize I have to pay more. Monday night in the Savannah is brass back and I'll come and support your best band. Come with your cooler, farm and I'll be safe. So, the Senior Kings and Queens semi finals and the Junior Kings and Queens final powered by Stamina Energy. Rise to the occasion. Well, we do have a correction to what I said earlier. We will not be bringing you the results of the junior kings and queens of carnival. That will follow at a later time. Of course, we will be bringing you all the action here on TTT, the home of carnival. So that result will be uh, happening in a short while. Not today, but certainly in the near future. We will be bringing you all the action as Carnival Week continues. And once again, I'd like to thank my co-host for expert commentary. We also thank our sponsors, including Blue Waters, Samarus, the international Carnival suppliers since 1949, Creamery Novelties, Live a Little, Stamina Energy, Rise to the Occasion, Nescafe, it all starts with a Nescafe, White Oak, if you know, you know. Be mobile, back to back, and I'll of course TTT Limited, the home of Carnival, and uh, we're making sure to have our Blue Waters on hand. So, on behalf of Peter and myself, Sharon Pitt, on behalf of the entire crew who worked so hard to bring you this magnificent spectacle, the Kings and Queens of Carnival, we wish you a safe evening and we invite you to return to the Carnival Action when next we broadcast live. Thank you and God bless.
Tonight, cancellation of Tuesday's South Kings and Queens of Carnival competition. As band leaders demanding answers, the mayor says funding was an issue. Who has the advantage going into this year's Calypso Monarch final? Sherilyn Lewis has been making the rounds of the tents. And in sport, with Sachin, Rovman Paul and Shea Hope confirmed as new West Indies white ball captains. Live from 11A Maraval Road, this is TDT News at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keisha Murray-Charles. And I'm Carrie Roberts. Welcome to TTT News. In our top story tonight, the King and